This version of It's Eric Nagel has been modified from its original broadcast. Content has been edited to fit this platform. Believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. It's Eric Nagel. And it starts now. Ladies and gentlemen of the universe, universe. the next voice you hear... It's Eric Nagel. Thank you, Scott Shannon. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the program. I am Eric Nagel. If you see Jordan over there melting in 30,000 degree heat in the deserts of Arizona, uh, throw him a lifeline, throw him a, a, a flask of something, and then say, uh, don't, be, don't live out here in the desert. Go where the normal people live. It's nice and hot. It's going to be like this until October, at least. I don't know why you put yourself through it. The fact Jeez. that your state is now trying to file for federal funding to declare heat a state of emergency. Not that I disagree. It's just, of course, it's your, it's Arizona. We're, we're leading the charge on the fact that we live in a terrible, terrible state. New Mexico, nothing. Nevada, nothing. No, they, Arizona. Get, they get real weather, though. Like, New Mexico has, you know, pretty fluctuating temperatures. I mean, even in the southern parts of New Mexico, you get snow. We don't get any of that down south. It's all up north. That's all the more reason to move. Uh, if you are uh, if you want to follow us across the board on all the social media platforms, at It's Eric Nagel, we are there and uh, ready to serve you. If you're listening to us, uh, the radio show version of the program. Oh, for some reason I'm bleeding. What did I just do? I scra- Oh, my God. I scratched my face. Now I'm bleeding. What a way to start this show. This is going to be a real clusterfuck. Um, if you're listening to us on iHeartRadio, thank you very much. If you're going to check out the show later on demand or you are listening on demand, available on Apple, Spotify, anywhere uh, you find podcasts and things like that. Man, that is really, I don't know what I did there. Uh, join us live each and every week for the program uh, in our live rooms in Twitch and on YouTube. You can hop in the chat, be part of the program, interact with us any way that you seem fit. And uh, that's it for the plugs. We've got a lot to do today, and I don't know how much time I have to do it all. So, I was going to say, I'm trying not to laugh. I mean, you're literally falling apart right now as we speak. Like, you're bleeding. Other things are going on. I just feel so bad for you. Yeah, I, I don't know how. I guess I went like this, and it cut me or something. But, yeah. Interesting. All right. Just goes for par for the course today. Uh, on today's program, we've got a lot to talk about. People are, are really getting into this trend about throwing shit at people who perform on stage. The world's largest cruise ship is uh, about to debut, and I'm very excited about that. I know to the disgust of Gittles, because he does not like anything uh, involving boats on the ocean. Even television shows that have been canceled after one season on streaming platforms. He's all anti-boat right now. He anything- just hasn't been the same since Speed 2. Since... So. Yeah. <laughs> he wanted that third one so bad, it just wasn't in so the cards. Bad. And uh, we got to talk about this uh, Colleen Ballinger in a, in a few minutes there. There's a whole bunch of stuff involving this lady, who I only knew, honestly, I knew from uh, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Seinfeld did an episode with her. Right. And then I found out like she was a big YouTube thing. And uh, then I saw that, oh, she does this character that does these songs and makes weird faces and such. But... Man, she is. Uh, this is something normally you'd find digging down the the rabbit hole of a guy performer, right? A politician, and I think that's what's something like that. So it, is, yeah, it is, is interesting to see that it's a female. Yeah, this time, and, and that's what's crazy about it, and how it's devolved just exponentially since it's since it broke. Right. It's a uh, should so be interesting. We will get into that uh, in just a little bit, but. Uh, what we need to start off with is that the tomorrow. Not the day that we're recording the show. It comes out on Friday. It's recorded on Thursday nights. But Friday itself, when the show comes out on video and on demand, tell everybody, um, I'm going in for my first colonoscopy. Now, you hit that part of uh, that time in your life where they've, uh, it's like, hey, you may want to go get this checked out. Not for any real reason. In fact, I had to ask. And they were like, why? What's wrong? Are you having problems? Tell us what the symptoms are. I was like, no, I just I've seen online and on TV for the last several years that this is really something you should do. And they lowered the age where insurance covers it. Now you have to be 45, I think. I believe so. That, yeah. that, that you qualify with insurance now so that you can go and do it because it used to be 50. And then they started finding out that even 50 wasn't good enough uh, after Chadwick Boseman died. If you don't know who he is, he was the Black Panther in the Marvel movies. And uh, he died from 
colon cancer or complications of something along those lines. But essentially, it probably could have been um, for most people. Not saying for, in his case, but it can be avoided if you if you go early and get detected and and yeah, check colon up and cancer. what have you. Colon cancer. Well. Uh, Bartholomew in the chat is saying, I always heard 40 was the time to start. I was just going to say that. I, I grew up thinking 40 was the start of that stuff. And well, then, like, you told me it was 50. I looked into it. You were right. And then it got dropped down to, I think, 45. And I think it, also it was part of, um, if, if, I, if I remember correctly, I think that was part of Joe Biden's campaign when Chadwick Boseman died. Uh, it mm-hmm. put a lot of... Uh, of attention on colonoscopies and, and uh, colon cancer and what have you. And he said he was going to work to have the age lowered to, to have that check because one, when, um, Chadwick Boseman died, every network online ads, things like that, they were all about go get screened, go get tested, whatever the procedure is, is referred to. Right. And a lot of these people who would watch Black Panther and Marvel and stuff, we're not old enough to go and get this done. Insurance won't pay for it unless you're a certain age. So you're, you're pushing and pushing. It's like, you got to go and, and get this done. Younger people, it'll help. The, the earlier you get it checked uh, and detected, the, the better off you are for surviving and, and hopefully eliminating it. It's like, oh, that's great. But no one under 50 qualifies. So what's the point of doing this big push, this big pa- campaign, if the people you're trying to aim this at either don't have any interest i mean they don't have any interest because you can't qualify to to get it done right now you can always get it done at a younger age if you have qualifying symptoms and then that you go through your general practitioner and a specialist and, and then they say okay yeah you need to go get it done and your insurance will then pay for it but if you just want to go get a screening and say hey you know, I, I've seen young, a lot more younger people um, getting affected by this or even dying because of this. And I know it's a big PSA push right now to go get checked. I'd like to go get checked. I found it a little off-putting with my doctor said, why? What's wrong with you? Not, oh, that's great that you're taking the initiative. It's why. What? What Do you, do you have any symptoms? What do we need to know? It's like nothing. It's like, it I does know- feel weird that if you're trying to be proactive that they're questioning it. Yeah. Like, what's, what, why does it hurt to have this done. I told him, it's like, Too I have a friend who's a, who's a little bit younger than me that had some issues for the last few years and he goes and gets it done. And I said, now the big push by the, uh, you know, because of Chadwick Boseman on TV, media's pushing it, the government's pushing everything out there, go get screened. So why not? Why can't, why should I ask not? Well, what's the problem? Do you have, we need to know if there's an issue before we even do this. I get that if that's the second part. The first part should be, oh, that's great that you're taking initiative because what person goes to the doctor and said, hey, I'd like to get tests done, especially if you they don't have I'm missing to. in my life? A large camera going right up the back end. Right. Yeah, no one wants this to happen. Yeah. Um, our pal Rob, the doctor said they never heard this many <laughs> teehees during a colonoscopy. That could probably happen. Apparently, they knock you out. Yeah, I guess the prep you're going to be kind of awake for. And then, yeah, you should sleep through the actual procedure. Right. And it's going to take probably 30 to 60 minutes on average. Um, but it's like two to three hours prep time. So I got to be there for a little while. ignorance on, on this particular part, because when I said I wanted to, you know, made the appointment and stuff to, to get it done. I didn't fully understand what it all involved. I thought it was almost like a, like a prostate check kind of thing. And then, no, it's pretty involved for what they're doing. And I say, oh, I didn't back out. I was like, oh, but it kind of freaked me out a little bit. I'm like, I went into this not fully knowing the entire procedure, but it needs to be done. So I'm doing it. So today I had a whole checklist of stuff that you have to do and to prep in order to get all this. Bartholomew, damn it. This is exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking that seem is this was this funny farm or Fletch? Where he did the Moon River. I think it was Fletch, right? I think it's Fletch. Yeah. I don't think that would happen. That's Funny exactly Farm. what I was thinking it was it was going to be and then found out uh, that was not the case. So I have this checklist, uh, checklist of stuff that I'm supposed to do before going in tomorrow for the, for the procedure. So you can't eat anything, which I'm sure everybody out there is like, good, you shouldn't be eating anything. Look at the size of you. Yes, I, I fully understand that. <laughs> but you can't have any solid foods, but you can have pretty much it's a day of a liquid diet so um it's been a lot of uh well not a lot but a couple of these these bone broth things that i drink anyway had a couple of those today and then you got to take some pills in one shot you got to take four pills in one shot 
And that is supposed now, to... Now, these prescribed pills or like no, over-the-counter o- like laxative type stuff? Everything's like over the softeners. counter. Um, hold on. I have the list that will tell you the names of it. So you had to take... A few hours back, I had to take four of uh, Dulcolax. D-U-L-C-O... Mm. L-A-X, Dulcolax, which I guess is a, is a laxative, the laxative yeah. with the lax name, with a large glass of water. Okay. Now, I put this off about um, an hour or so when I was supposed to start this because we were going to do the show and I wanted to start doing this for the show. Uh, so now I have to drink a 64-ounce bottle of um, liquid with this stuff called uh, Miralax mixed in. 238 grams mixed Oof. into this. Now, if you're not uh, like uh, the rest of the world that knows the uh, the metric system and, and scales, weights, and measures and all of that, because you're a dumb <laughs> American like myself, I'm thinking, all right, probably like a, you know, six ounce bottle or something. I don't know. You know, that we used to do that stuff on ONA, the, the clear stuff, the clear soda We'd make people mm. drink, and then they'd have to stand there for the show, and the last one to shit their pants. Or we made them wear adult diapers, uh, one tickets or an iPad or something like that. So I'm thinking it's oh, it's like this kind of uh, that kind of clear soda that that just runs through and uh, clears you out. Well, no, it's it's a bottle of powdered, I guess, goodness. Look how <laughs> big this thing is. Oof! Look how big that is. That's a big bottle. That's, that's a big. That's bottle. a big bottle. Had to get mixed into a 64-ounce bottle of things. So uh, I'm borrowing somebody's uh, daily water thing. <laughs> and Daily. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. And like, how quickly do you have to have this, like, down? This like, is one of those hour? things that a lot of girls have where it tells you by hourly or, or every two hours where you keep drinking to motivate right. you and all that stuff. So You're doing great. This was the only thing I knew that we had that would that could fit sixty four ounces. Um, so in here is mixed with you had your choice of, let's see, you had your choice of Gatorade, apple juice, or white grape juice to mix this in. Um, you could just do water, but apparently this stuff tastes awful. So they give you options to uh, mix it in so that it could help ease the taste of, of what all this so what i did was this is uh orange gatorade so i'm thinking like it, look if you can tolerate emergency or something like that this right. is probably in the same ballpark and this is what i'm going to do um trashitarian in the chat saying they didn't sub- uh, they didn't prescribe pills that's way better than drinking it um no they they everything the list they gave me was everything was over the counter that you could get at uh walgreens cvs things like that so i did that um ate nothing today now i gotta drink some of this and i'm gonna set the timer so apparently every 20 minutes i need to drink this until it's finished so this is going to be kind of like um you know how they do the power hours sometimes where every minute right. they did a shot or something like that? So it's going to be something along those lines. So we are going to start the timer. 20 minutes is uh, counting down, and I'm going to drink some of this. Jordan, feel free to say whatever you want. Now, my thing is, is while we're live, Ugh. the... <laughs> Cut your face. It's a bit uh, much, but it's all right. Yeah. Now, the best case and worst case scenario here is that all this stuff kicks in while we are live and while we're recording. So we can have Eric literally running upstairs and trying to recreate Dumb and Dumber's uh, scene where he's on the toilet. Well, what I did was uh, chalky. Um, What I test I tested out. I have a mobile device also set to this to the feed here so if i do have to run i can turn this off and turn the other on for some reason it wasn't working if both are on so i got to turn this off to hit the thing on the phone to turn me on for the other device so then you can join me as i uh, venture off into the world while you guys continue to do the show until i return now i don't know your studio setup do you have a restroom close by so the the you don't yeah have the, to... the studio has a bathroom so gotcha. um it's, i would just i would hate for you to have to grab it's not far it's right down the hall it up there the stairs, so, so yeah okay so you uh the, yeah the studio is built has a bathroom has its own facility for everything so we can just run down there and and do it as we need to do it gotcha 
Uh, Gittle should be here in a few moments. He was uh, running late coming from uh, his other job there. So, uh, yes, that is a lot. Um, our ever supportive friend Rob. Too bad you couldn't mix your uh, your powders with your free Seven Eleven Day Slurpee. Yes, I've been. Uh, I did a nice little PSA for the consumer this week, reminding everybody you don't like Slurpees. You think you do, but you don't. Everybody well, thinks they do, did, but they don't. Even if you even if you did, you're saving like three bucks, and you're waiting an enormous amount of time to try to get something. No. Everybody in your office or your workplace is all going like, oh, did you go? And they get their tiny little Dixie. It's just like a step above a (laughs) Dixie cup that says 7-Eleven Slurpee. Oh, did you go down and get your free Slurpee? Everyone's got to get your free Slurpee. Oh, because this is the cool thing to do. We all need to, you know, uh, get our free Slurpees for 7-Eleven Day. You don't like Slurpees. Now, there is an exception because some people did write to me and said, well, the Coca-Cola Slurpee is fantastic. Now, I'll agree with you. The Coca-Cola Slurpee isn't bad, especially if you mix it with a little bit of the, if your 7-Eleven has Coca-Cola's other product, Fanta. They have the the cherry, uh, wild cherry Fanta. So if you do a little quick hit of that into the cup and then, you know, do the, the Coca-Cola Slurpee, it's cherry Coke. It's It's perfectly fine. But... When you have a Slurpee, you just, it, most people get brain freezes too fast. I know they made that part of their uh, their appeal, their advertisements for the longest time. Mm-hmm. But you're just f- tasting sugar. And it's not like the good kind of sugar. You're tasting the pieces that didn't mix down and it's just going through your teeth. And it's it's like nobody likes Slurpees. And like kids get Slurpees. They, they get the... the the stupid blue raspberry or one of the other neon concoctions and kids like that. And that's fine. But you get to a certain point that you just don't like Slurpees. And the same goes for Icy's, for slush puppies, any of these things that you see at a restaurant or a movie theater or um, uh, some kind of convenience store that may have one of those brands. You always think that they're better than what you remember. I mean, you always think they're, yeah, they're better because you remember it being better. But when you go and you have it, it it's not at all. They're all terrible. All yeah, of I took the kids uh, to a movie and I ended up getting them ICs. And I hadn't had one in years. Like, I, you're right. I, I haven't gone out my way to get one. I haven't tried one in a while. So I had a, I had a try of it. And it is so sugary and so strong that it just kind of was like a turnoff. I'm like, I don't want this ever again. You take your Slurpee, eat your blue tongue. You guys are cool. But yeah, I don't want any of that anymore. Yeah, uh, Bartholomew in the chat saying, I I like Slurpees once or twice a year. Not about to stand in line for one, though. Yeah, it's terrible. Everybody stands. And I saw uh, there's a couple 7-Elevens. They're not like in this area. They're every couple miles. There's a 7-Eleven near you. Like there's a there's a ton of them. And I saw the lines. I saw people waiting to uh, get to the Slurpee machine. It's not like out the door, but you can see in the store. People were lined up, wrapped around trying to get all that. Um it's not worth your time to go get it for such a subpar beverage. But remember when 7-Eleven used to do that thing? Was it Slurpees or was it some other beverage where you, if you brought your own container? It was Slurpee. It was Slurpee? Yeah, where you can fill whatever container for like one price. 7-Eleven used to have that giant oversized orange container that was like for NASCAR. They had a white and black one and then they had the orange and black one that looked like either like a like the Sanka coffee can or uh uh the Duke uh the General Lee from the Dukes of Hazard. But they had these giant containers that you could buy and then you go and it's humorous to think if you have this just this big bucket and you're trying to get it under to hit the ticker just to get like Dr. Pepper. You know, it's like I'm taking all of this to the work site with me, or yeah, they're like people triple take it to the insulated. Beach. They're like real, like they'll keep everything cold for like 12 hours. Uh, super big gold or some shit. Bartholomew saying, yeah, but I yeah. think that it was some other kind of promotion. They were just gigantic with the little plastic handle, and there's this giant beverage container, and it is a, it is the thought of it is appealing. You're like, I could, that would be awesome to have something like that, but then you never do it. You don't go and you buy it. Because if you brought that to work, what are people going to say? You know, it's dumb enough that everybody has these things now in their office space, but nobody's really saying anything about it. If you show up with a giant orange container that's filled with, you know, Chicka Cherry Cola, delicious, yes, but you're, you're going to get some eyes looking at you and people talking behind your back. 
What if you showed up to the beach with that? You're carrying your umbrella, your chair, your blankets, your bags, and then you got this oversized beverage that's just sitting in the sand, and now all the sand is sticking to it from the from the humidity. So apparently, they still do the bring your own Slurpee Cup day. Right. Um, this past year was in April, so basically, you just bring whatever you can to fill up, and they will allow you to fill up. The cup must fit upright in a ten-inch hole, so like you have to have. Um, uh, an ability to fill it up. You only right. get one per person. It has to be watertight and it has to be food safe. So you can't bring in like a, you know, aquarium and yeah. fill it up with Slurpee. Um, but you can bring in one of those little fish bowls. But yeah, okay, they, apparently bowl. they still do that. And the last one was back in uh, April of 2023. So that's, yeah, I, I just, I, I couldn't. It, it's for people to get on social media. Yeah. It's look what I filled up. You're not drinking the whole thing. You're not going to do it. Look, You're going to probably dump most of that out. You have to also keep in mind because some people go and they think about how dumb it is that these companies do that. And I agree with you. But think about it from the marketing perspective and what the companies are doing. People are dumb enough to do all of this stuff and fall for mm-hmm. it. So it's very smart on the, on the, the side of the company to do like... Nintendo has now adopted March 10th, and they call it Mario Day, right? Because it spells mm-hmm. out Mario. And I said Mario, but Mario. Everyone gives me shit for that. Um, but then 7-Eleven, July 11th, 7-Eleven Day, that just works into their marketing. It's perfect for that. So if it, you take advantage of that and, and do what you got to do, it's not stupid on the part of the company. It's stupid on part of the people that, that fall for it all the time. But, you know, what can you do? You just got to tell people, it's like, you don't like Slurpees. You well, think you like do, making, but you don't. It, it's like when they make holidays out of everything. It's like, it's National Donut Day. Right. Oh, look, it's National Pizza Day. But oh, it's, look, National it's National Pizza Day like seven day. times a year. National Dude, Pizza Day, pizza Donut Day, day <laughs> Coffee Day, uh, Cheeseburger, Hamburger Day. Like all these days. Who's in charge of the fucking days? We keep talking about that. Who, who puts <laughs> out calendar? this calendar? When you get your calendar, you're getting all the major and all the weird holidays already marked on there for you because that's just how they do it. You don't get the national days of anything on that stuff, but except for for radio stations or local news where they get the same prep service, I guess, and go, hey, today is National Kool-Aid Day. And like, so everybody go out there and get a glass of Kool-Aid. It's like, who said it was? Who said so it was? As we're as we're recording, it's July thirteenth. Uh, today is National Barbershop Music Appreciation Day. No, it's not. National Beans and Franks Day, and my favorite, National Delaware Day. Delaware. I'm in Delaware. <laughs> I don't think I still have that background. Otherwise, I'd throw it on. Yeah. Those, so those are the official yeah. days. But. Tomorrow is actual uh, National French Fry Day, and I think McDonald's is doing a promotion to give people French fries. So okay, go hit up your uh, McDonald's, go get some free fries. Free something, whatever. And people go crazy for something that's not worth the money, or they could easily just spend a buck more and get a giant size of it and be uh, better off. Now, see, like not Uncle Phil says, Ben and Jerry has free cone day. That's a little different. That's a promotional gimmick that they've done forever like uh, so you could sample i don't know if it's sampling new flavors i think it's sampling classic flavors to try to get people in to um buying ben and jerry's that's almost like if you're in costco or a supermarket or something where they got the samples out by whatever company's paying try our cheese try our our salted meats try this little cup of uh coconut milk or, or something you know weird and bizarre as you walk the aisles, um, I don't see any problem with like the free cone day or if McDonald's was doing free French fry day, stuff like that. Uh, 7-Eleven doing free Slurpee day. It ties into their promotions. It's just people think they like this stuff and they don't. Look, French fries, I can't argue with that. I'm sure everybody does love McDonald's French fries, but you don't love Slurpees. <coughs> you think you do, but you don't. That's well, not a reason that you take a, that you leave the office for half an hour to go down to a 7-Eleven to try to get a Slurpee and come back, and your boss is like, "Where the fuck were you? Oh, I had to get my you know my blue raspberry free Slurpee day for 7-Eleven." <laughs> right. Do that now on you're your on own the Zoom time. Call with a blue tongue. Yeah, looking like an idiot. So dumb. You're in your 40s. Calm down. 
Well, Tim's yeah, tomorrow. Uh, look, uh, oh, shit. Right Got to go appreciate some barbershop music today. <laughs> totally forgot about it. Later, guys. See, look what look, you did, Jordan. My favorite day is because I get to celebrate the B sharps. It, name it, name that's funny at first, but gets less funny each time you say it. it sounds perfect. I know. Now I'm thinking of barbershop stuff. All I'm thinking is um, from barbershop, um, barbershop, uh, Bioshock Infinite. When you yeah. first get to Columbia in the sky, and they uh, the barbershop, and you know what? I'm gonna pull up a clip of it because we haven't seen that in a long time. I love Infinite. I I, I like the original. And I like the second one was fun, but I really did like being up in Columbia and up in the sky and seeing some of like the the time merges where you're like you're hearing like hi Andrew, uh, Andrew you've been- Cindy Lauper playing and right. you're seeing Back to the Future on the movie theater and it was just that was such a fun uh, game. Uh, I guess there's a new game coming out and I got to find the title of it that looks almost exactly like a shot for shot just rip off of that. Right, but it looks cool. Okay, I think I got this here. Take a look. There they are. So what good would living do me? God only knows what I'd be without you. See, that's when you immediately realize there's something going on. Yeah, because this like, they're in singing the, past. the Beach Boys. Yeah, but they're singing stuff from the future. Yeah. So good. It's not really anything involved with the game other than it's just a feature in the city and it sounds fantastic. I have that on my switch. Look at that tonight. <laughs> yeah. All right. Why is all this stuff firing at once over on my end? I know you can't hear it, but weird. See, Rob's a little slow. He just figured out the song that they were playing. <laughs> and this is exactly what I was talking about Warren it's like I love the Coca-Cola Slurpees don't even care yeah that's the only one if you mix a little cherry into it that's even better mm-hmm. that's the only one worth your time for getting a Slurpee but overall people just don't like they think they do but they don't because you go there and you're like oh my god this is great I'm going to get a Slurpee and then you get it and you go why did I get this this was a complete waste of money this was just I could have gotten something so much better they have a massive selection of beverages and then you're going and you're wasting your time on a Slurpee. My don't thing is, well, how come they never really, like, you don't see a ton of other flavors of sodas coming out as a Slurpee. Like, they've done the standard Coca-Cola, but you don't see, like, a Dr. Pepper Slurpee all that often. You don't see, like, a Sprite Slurpee. That would be kind Maybe of... Maybe they don't work... I don't, I'm not, that can't be true. <clears throat> they, I'm sure a Dr. Pepper Slurpee would work well. I think a Dr. Pepper Slurpee would be really good. I don't know. But it's always weird flavors because it's you, anytime you're at the you're checking out and you look behind them where the Slurpee machine is, it's always neon colors, green, pink, one yeah, kind of beige what appeals thing. To the that, kids, yeah. Uh, apparently, they have a Baja Blast uh, freezes at Taco Bell. Uh, I right. guess that's their version of Slurpee. I can't. I just you're not going to Taco Bell for the Slurpee for the the what is it the freezes any of that stuff i don't know maybe it's just me but i just i don't think people like slurpees they think they do but they don't i don't know i guess i'm just out of it i haven't i haven't been to a 7-eleven 7-eleven lately there's nothing close to me 7-eleven wise mm-hmm. so i like i haven't been in i don't do the slurpees i don't go to that side of the like i don't ever do the like the fountain drinks in the gas stations anymore so like then since they're so close together i just don't ever go in that direction so i wouldn't know Okay. I don't know where Giddles is. He said he was going to be here, and he's not here yet. Um, All right. Moving on from this here. Uh, What do you want to do? Do you want to talk about the the people dying from TikTok stunts? Do you want to go into the stuff um, with the uh, people getting shit thrown on stages? Where do you want to go? We could do the stuff thrown on stages. I don't. I mean, both things are probably equally. All right, you take the lead on this for a second. Care. I gotta send something out real quick. Go ahead. So lately, there's been this trend where people go to these concerts, and 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 it's been on TikTok a lot lately with like Pink, where people have been just throwing random shit or handing stuff to the performer on stage. Um, recently, Pink was handed in, I think, in France 
a literal large uh, wheel of cheese. You know, like a big thing of Parmesan just handed to her. Hankering for um, a hunk of cheese? <laughs> people have been throwing like, uh, you know, um, I think Morgan Wallen recently was signing stuff um, on stage for people and they would, you know, sign my hat, sign this. And someone threw a boot up at him for him to sign. So then he just chucks the boot in the opposite direction. Like, I, I don't what understand. What do you do, like a, like a karate block? You know, like a fan wipe kind of thing? I, I don't know. Like, I can't just remember. deflected it? I can't remember if it hit him or like it it got close to hitting him, but yeah, it definitely got up to him. And then um he just like was signing other stuff, picked it up and just chucked this boot out in the other opposite direction. And I'm like, why are you throwing A your shoes? Right. And B, why are you throwing things to begin with? I've seen uh performers like just stop, like say, Okay, I'm done, I'm not doing this anymore, and then walk off stage. And it ha- it's, ha- it's happened before in the past, it not to the level it's been happening lately. Right. We, we've seen it happen in the past, and usually it was just like a freak occurrence. Like, the, one of the more infamous ones was, uh, um, well, it happened to Guns N' Roses a lot, I guess. But there was one yeah. where, uh, I think it was on the tour where Guns N' Roses uh, and Metallica were co-headlining. And one of the shows, he got hit in the head with a bottle, and then he's like, oh, that's, and he threw the mic down, and he walked off. But then there was another Guns N' Roses show where um, Axel's playing on the piano. Maybe it was November Rain or something, but he's playing on the piano. The spotlight's kind of on the piano where the band's kind of dark off to the back and to the side. And somebody hucked a glass bottle full of piss and hit Duff McKagan right in the head. Oh, shit. And Duff got up. I guess it cut him or something. And he got up and, and uh, f- you know, from being uh, knocked down and he walked off. Axel finished the piano stuff, gets up, walks around. Somebody on the stage, I guess, is flagging him. He comes over and he sees this and it just kind of goes quiet for a little bit. And then he comes back on, starts yelling at the crowd. And it's like, well, thanks to you, you know, or thanks to one person who's got to ruin it for everybody. You know, Duff got hit in the head with a bottle. Now he's on his way to the hospital. So uh, we're out of here. We're going home. Bye. And he threw the mic down and then Slash said something. That, yep. See you later. Bye. Those were freak occurrences. Those were big deals, but they were freak occurrences. It wasn't happening to the rate that it's been happening this year. Yeah, it's been like I'm reading this article here. So back in, what was it? 2010 ish. Um, Guns N' Roses were on stage. They were a little late. It's happened. He is known for being late all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, So the crowd's throwing stuff on stage. So he warns them and he goes, here's the deal. One more bottle up here and we go. We don't want to go. It's your choice. So then he, it was during their second song. He was doing Welcome to the Jungle and he just stops and gives this thing. And then he's introducing the band members after whatever. And then someone threw a bottle up there and he goes, okay, that's it. Good night. Have a nice evening. And they just finished the entire, that's it. They left. And it's just, it's crazy. Um, like I said, lately they hand, someone handed, like I said, a wheel of cheese to pink while she was performing. Someone threw a bag of their, he was either their mother or their father's ashes. Oh, on it stage. was, yeah, it was a, cont- oh, gonna have oh, to refuel. Um, it was a container of their mom's ashes at pink. Oh yeah! Like what is what is going on? They did that. There was um, there was a country singer or maybe a pop singer. I don't know. Kelsey uh, Kelsey Ballerini. Ballerini got hit with something. Uh, the other pop singer, uh, Baby Rexa, got hit with a cell phone, and the way the person threw it was right on angle, and it cut her eye. Like it hit her right here. It cut her eye, gave her a black and blue uh, that you saw the next day, and then she had blood coming down her face. She finished up whatever she did. She went and got stitches and stuff, uh, or it sealed up. And um, yeah, like she got it really bad. And then like Pink, who else just got it? Harry Styles got Harry hit Styles. recently. Got uh, somebody Drake. threw something with at him. Drake, yeah, Drake got hit too. I don't know what this trend is. Like why this is now a thing. Like everybody has to get their. TikTok, YouTube, social media moment. Like everybody has to make it about themselves. Like I'm the guy who got arrested for throwing this at uh, you know at whoever. I I don't understand why people look. 
going to concerts is a ripoff anyway. I've been saying that for years. Stop going to <laughs> events. Stop buying these things. They're overpriced and they're not worth your money. But if you're going to spend your money and you go to these things, why would you? And especially if you're up front near the stage, it's got to be expensive. Oh, it's why are you no. wasting your money to go and just do this? Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. This doesn't give you any kind of what's the term they clout this doesn't right. give them any clout any kind of uh, leverage to do something beneficial for their social media account or their branding or whatever they're they're fucking doing uh it's a complete waste and then everybody just knows that pink got hit in the head with uh, somebody's remains not i'm the guy who threw the remains at pink's head nobody right. remembers the people who throws this shit well, it's all. weird because like in the 70s and 80s, like the big trend was like, eh, throw your bra up there, throw your underwear, you know, do something like, oh, that's that's, you know, sexy for the uh, the artist. They make a big deal and they move on. It, it almost seems like they're trying to hurt the artists they're here to see. Yeah. Like if you're throwing a bottle at them, you're throwing your cell phone. It's not like you're saying, hey, here's something for you to sign. Like the Morgan Wallen thing, I get like they threw it up there. They may have been bad at it. I don't know why you're throwing your boot, but whatever. He's signing stuff. I get it. People are throwing things at the artist with intent. Right. And it just doesn't make sense. Uh, like you said, they're not getting any clout out of it. Uh, they're not getting recognition. And in most cases, they're probably just going to go to jail. I'm and sure they I did. If they catch the person who exactly right. did it. You know, so in some cases, the audiences have been good at pointing out, you know, that's the person that uh, you know threw whatever, or that's the person who yelled, th whatever was the problem uh, on stage. That and they're usually good at pointing those people out, and that's not ratting on people. That's just you know, hey, this guy's being an asshole. Get him out of here. But most of the times they don't. Sometimes like people just huck shit and then they're running through the crowds, or whatever. You don't know who threw it. You didn't see which direction it came from exactly. It's like it seemed it came off from the right side of the stage. You don't know. So, like, what are the benefits to this other than you enjoy being a dick? I mean, I've been to a lot of, like, outdoor venues where people would, like, in the back or, like, in the lawn area would throw stuff forward and, and stuff like that. But I, it's it's very rare for me to see people throwing things at the stage to actually, like, like you said, injure somebody, get attention or whatever. And it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. I'm actually sending an article to you real quick. It actually, <laughs> this is the fans keep throwing objects at musicians. This is the list of incidents. And then there's some videos. So we, we can check one of them out. Let me post that real quick. But yeah, it's just, I don't, I, I just, especially have you if seen you're this? paying have you for been, ticket. Have you been to a concert or to a sporting event or something and you've seen stuff like this? Because I've, I've seen, seen it once in my life, but it's, I think it qualifies in that genre of interrupting a show. That wasn't stuff that was thrown. I was a little kid and uh, we had gone, it was one of the World Series games for the Mets. And a guy came down at Chase Stadium with a parachute. He jumped out of a plane in the middle of the World Series. And he had like the, the smoke stuff All right. with him as he went down and landed on the, the field at Chase Stadium as a kid. You're like, oh, that's awesome. And then my dad's trying to tell me that's not part of the, the game of the celebration. That guy's going to jail. So Well, you've seen like, you know, like football matches or soccer matches where they're like, get streakers every now and then like this is you know the equivalent of that but it just doesn't again they're not out there to hurt anybody either they're just running around like an idiot right you know they're getting their little bit of um notoriety and that's it but to throw something at somebody and to try to assault them in some way i just don't understand it especially if these people are paying for these tickets you know like a lot of the concerts i've been to lately did you, you know, want to just do the article or did you want to watch the video here for this there's the video of the Harry Styles, and I think there's the Kelsey Ballerini video okay. in that article, so you can... All right, Gittles is joining just, us here, too. People should throw doing? things at everyone for every reason. I'm I'm totally okay <laughs> with just throwing shit at people. Just Gittles it. is taking the opposite stance. Just throw them all. Dude, people come into my store, and I'm like, gland fight, and I just throw glands from a pig at them. Like, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you have so much business going on. This is why they outlawed the tomahawk steaks at his butcher, so he just yeah, doesn't... Yeah, I killed seven people with one. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, we were talking about uh, people getting hit on stage, and uh, this is the video Jordan just sent over here for it. This is Harry Styles getting hit. It's the Harry Styles. Morning, oh. more dangerous incidents for pop stars performing around the world. Superstar Harry Styles hit with an object by something apparently thrown from the crowd while performing in Europe. 
Videos posted on social media show an object Just hitting like Silas in, right in the face on stage at his concert in Vienna. The Grammy Award winning singer yeah. people throw sodas at fast food workers all the time and then fight them. Away. Summer concert and they're not season making Harry Styles swing money, with so. mostly adoring and respectful no. fans. But we don't care about the them. We care about our celebrities. No, we only care about the rich. Going too far. In June, singer BB Rexa oh. needed stitches after she was hit in her face was by that the, a flying yeah. BB Rexa. That's BB Rexa. Look at that. Selfie afterwards, reassuring fans, I'm good. A few days later, singer Ava Max said she was recovering after a fan slapped her while she was performing are. in Los Angeles. Max writing, he slapped me so I don't know hard her. that he scratched I met B- the uh, inside B-B Rex of at, my uh, eye. Jingle Ball. During a concert in London, Pink was tossed a bag reportedly containing the ashes of, of a fan's ashes. mother. The superstar shocked. This is your mom? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Right, she's like, I'm just going to set this right. She should have just put it on the floor and did a line of it. Adele oh. speaking out against the trend at her Las Vegas residency. Yeah, nobody wanted to throw anything at Adele. She's just baiting them now. Show ...after a fan threw a bracelet on stage, summing Damn. up the feelings of many in a later post, writing, That's all I ever want is for shows to feel like a safe place for us all. So well, she's she's never been in the crowd right. of a show, but yeah, like <laughs> I mean, they're not really that safe out there. But I, I, I get you shouldn't have to worry that because so, uh, what's going to happen is that we're going to get, you know, how like we have uh, since COVID now where you have these uh, like a Comic Con or like this past weekend I was at a horror convention. Some of the artists like um, Elvira, she had a plexiglass between you and you know herself so if you're getting a picture with her you could literally only get so far before you're touching plexiglass you're going to see this happen at these shows now where you're going to see these live artists playing and they're just going to be enclosed in a bubble no what's going to happen what's going to happen is because these are all pop stars and they're all pretty much lip syncing they're just going to get doubles and the doubles are going to go on stage for them and sing and be famous and make them all the money wait a minute is that joe biden's double singing songs no that's not Harry Styles. That's Larry Styles. Like, hello, <laughs> I'm here. He's got the bald head, for, like Larry Fine from the Three Stooges. Yeah. Oh, it's like how you know they replaced the Darrens and Bewitched. We knew we were gonna get, not get the other one. Yeah, yeah. Don't throw shit at people. Like, just don't throw shit at people unless they're asking for it. It's yeah, just, there's sometimes uh, there's like there's hard rock concerts and uh, industrial music and EDM stuff where they want you to throw shit or you know around the glow sticks or. I mean, Steve Aoki (laughs) throws a cake at people every show. I mean, he's throwing stuff back at. But Giddles is right. If the artist is is saying throw your water bottle or like Limp Biscuit and and the the Chili Peppers and stuff during Woodstock '99, where they're like, "Hey, rip up some of the structure and huck it around the uh, destroy this place." Yeah, destroy this place. Remember when Green Day got hit with like the mud in like '94 Woodstock, and everyone wasn't like, "Oh, poor Green Day." They're like, "Ha ha, Green Day got hit with mud." Yeah, like it's just so funny how things have changed now. It's just like, oh, that's what happens if you're a rock star back in the day now it's just like oh no i like how giddles just, just made the compelling argument it's like back in my day when we threw stuff at musicians <laughs> damn musicians right took it and didn't say anything about it because they weren't pussies today nowadays right. they stopped the show because i got Dude, cut by a cell phone not only that but someone threw the bass player's bass in the air and then it hit him himself oh wait that was the only the, the bass player that was from nirvana wasn't that red hot chili peppers <laughs> yeah i was gonna say <laughs> threw that up smashed him right in his Threw face smashed himself right in the face well in the opposite way, um, Guns N' Roses, I guess Axel's big, his big thing was after every show, he would toss his mic out into the crowd and you know, about a year back, maybe like six months, um, he threw one out and hit a chick <laughs> who wasn't paying attention. And almost, I think he broke her nose. Mm-hmm. So he had to stop doing it at shows. Like it used to be a signature thing. And then now he's like, well, I can't throw this, you know, $300 microphone into the crowd because I'm going to knock somebody out. But yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I'm paying enough money for concerts. I'm not going to go and disrupt the show. I want to sit there and yeah, because be I don't want to have to fight for a refund. Myself. I don't have to. But fight you won't get it for no, these. Yeah, exactly. Well, what if? What if this is a conspiracy? What if they're going on stage singing to something <laughs> like I really don't want to do the show? Someone throw a bottle at me so I can walk off stage and I can still get the money. I don't, we don't have to refund anybody. What? If, what if that's what's happening? I mean, if you want to do the tinfoil hat again, yes, that, I that could be. <laughs> That could be the. Uh, I've been to six <laughs> concerts way. this year where the, somebody threw something at them and they just ended the concert. We got no refunds. Well, stop throwing stuff at them, Giddles, and you wouldn't have the shows end like that. But why does it have to be me? Why do I, I have pay to pay for stop that? This? Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
It's always the shows that, that Giddles is at are the ones that end early because somebody got hit with something. Well, anyway. This is some Russian EDM. Let's go to the, let's open up the phone lines uh, and tell us what who would you like to throw stuff at and what would you throw at that person? <laughs> oh, wait, we're not on regular radio anymore, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, every caller. Yeah, hi, I'd like to throw shit at all three of you. <laughs> I've been throwing it on my computer screen, but I need a new monitor. I'm outside with Thanks a whole calling, bag. Of, I'm, a whole, I'm outside calling, with Rob. a whole bag of golf cleats. I'm waiting for you to go to your car. Come on. It's like, all right, we're not ending the show right now. This no. is going to be a problem. Um, all right, so that's happening. Uh, if you're going to concerts, you're spending too much money. One, don't go to concerts. Two, if you do go to concerts, don't throw anything. You're wasting Unless you're your asked money. To. Sometimes, the, sometimes these artists are like, that is correct. Throw a if me, they ask you, if Taylor show. Swift says, "Hey, everybody, huck your beverages up on the stage," then you got to oblige because she's Taylor Swift and she asked you to. But if she didn't ask you, don't have the whole crowd huck your beverages on stage <laughs> while she's performing. <laughs> Taylor oh, Swift could legitimately get people murdered. If she was just like, I don't That's like true. this person. I wish someone would kill them. Like her fans would fucking do it. <laughs> they are. Uh, they're insane. They like, are insane. And fans like you're insane. I think the word you're thinking, Giddles, is loyal. They're loyal. Yeah. <laughs> like Taylor Swift. Yeah. Taylor Swift's like a new mafia outlet. It's like she's had people killed over the years and you'll she never know. 100 percent can. <laughs> Like there's always, if you there's so somebody going through a ly- dissecting the lyrics. Like each song is just a lo- it, it, it hints to a location that a body is buried. Taylor Swift needs to be stopped. <laughs> Isn't it crazy that all her ex boyfriends are dead? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just you run it backwards and it's just longitude and latitude, and then you go find bodies. Yeah, <laughs> she knew she knew where Hoffa was the whole time. Yeah, ridiculous. All right, moving on. Uh, if we want to talk about something that's uh, probably more ridiculous than hucking things at uh, artists on stage. It's the continuing trend of people dying trying to do TikTok videos. And we have two different stories here for you. Uh, The first one is about a teen who uh, in Los Angeles fell to his death because he was trying to do some kind of stunt while recording it on one of these these giant loops on a bridge. And uh, it didn't work out. A 17-year-old well, boy... What was he trying to do? A, sli- a 17-year-old boy slipped and plummeted to his death from the popular new 6th Street Viaduct in Los Angeles after climbing the bridge as part of an apparent social media stunt. The u- uh, the youths. What's a ute? Excuse me. It's about six feet under. The two youths? The two youths. Uh, the youth's body was found about 2 a.m. Saturday on the eastern side of uh, the span, which was becoming a troubling magnet for gunplay, dangerous stunts, and careless online clout chasing since it opened a year ago. So you open up this multi-million dollar bridge to improve the area and improve transportation uh, in this particular section of Los Angeles, and it is now just a magnet for uh, for gang warfare and uh, teen stunts. <laughs> I'm just I'm just thinking of like these teen teens that want to film with TikTok, but they have to wait until the gunplay is over with. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going yeah, on? And then they fall off the bridge and die. It's like a final destination death. Like you dodge all the gunfight and then you trip over a shoelace <laughs> and fall off a bridge. Oh my god. Uh so the I mean the one thing I will say about all these TikTok deaths are that they're it's, filming it's, them. Thinning out the herd. So, like, every single one of these people who died, like, videotaped their own death and didn't get to see it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like, looking at this bridge right now. So, is that like their families, like, retrieved their phone and they're like, let's see what he. Oh, geez, Jimmy, what'd you do? <laughs> they just have to look through the phone. It's like uh, bodies, bodies, bodies. Oops, <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, the teen whose name has not been released uh, was taken to LA County USC Medical Center. He was pronounced dead. The uh, Los Angeles police chief said uh, Tuesday during a meeting of the Los Angeles Police Commission that the victim lost his footing and fell while climbing upon one of the arches in order to post apparently a social media broadcast. He was going up there to live stream. I was going to say, I'm looking at the bridge now. So it looks like, so the bridge is just a normal bridge, but then there's these like humps throughout the these bridge. Humps, like these humps, these humps, these lovely lady lumps. Right. Right. Um, I have the I photo here. We can take a look at this. Look at this thing. Looks like, it's look like an art piece. 
it looks like those things that you used to have when you were training for baseball and you throw the baseball into it, it would throw it back to you because you didn't have friends. Oh, like the, the, net. the the netting that would spring yeah, it back to you? Yeah, that's what it looks like. I'm just disappointed he wasn't live streaming as it happened. Like, if you're going to go and be... I have no sympathy that's for what I'm saying. This we kid. don't know. These people could have been. No, they said he apparently he was trying to get up there to do a live broadcast for social media. <laughs> film the, film the journey. Film the journey, the as they say. The police chief's picture in this article is hilarious. He's just got his arms up like, I give up. I don't know what to do about this. It's ridiculous. And then, the, yeah. Uh, well, the the kid uh, fall down, go boom, and died. So that's unfortunate. So that's uh, one thing. Oh, here's another photo of people actually. On it? On top. Oh, my God. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah, I was just looking at that one. Like, I can imagine one of these kids on the BMX is trying to ride their bike up that thing. Because I've seen, like, those oh, yeah. trail videos and stuff like that where they're trying to do that sort of thing. Like, this is something that... This is... How, how do you block that off from people? This is a cakewalk in the day of any of those Russian parkour people. They will sit on top <laughs> of a 70-story skyscraper with one finger down and be like, ooh hoo ooh yeah. and just, like, laugh and, like... <laughs> take a shit off of it you're like dude how are you like holding on those rushing like, crane videos are so terrifying they're so scary they're I, I have a thing with heights to begin with but same. when you're seeing this there and then all of a sudden they're just doing the one arm hang and then doing a pull up from the oh, no, edge of you. the crane and you just see forest like it still hasn't been developed and they're just hanging in dude, the middle I, I saw one where a guy <sighs> was doing like the one arm pull up but he was like doing it fast so he would pull up let go and then catch it again and he was like at yeah. least 600 feet above the ground. Like, just this, this ridiculous height. It's like, dude, like, one slip, you're dead. Like, that's it. You know, like, I, like I'm sure they realize this because they're in Russia. Right. But, like, well, it's just any any time you do something like, like those those people that rock climb and do, like, the fa the rock face where they're just oh, yeah, climbing up right. with just chalk and fucking tiny shoes. And I'm, I'm just like, why? Like, Look at why this one. Do it? It's a father helping his kids up. That's not even the top it. part, though. No, I, mean, I like, know, but still, look, it's right there on the edge next to the... I mean, maybe. It looks like there could be a space there. I'm trying like, to see there could be a walkway on the other side. Still, I wouldn't do this. And, and you're on a bridge. You're on a major bridge where cars and bikes are going over this thing daily, unless now this is the new hangout where people just hang out on the bridge. I guess somebody was filming like a, a music video back in January on it because this opened last July. Yeah. Um, and Look at he this. got shot. Like someone drove by and shot him. This looks like a bridge. Yeah. That's what I'm, it's just a bridge. Just hanging out. What? People keep dying? LAP, LAPD says, well, oh, we can't. These oh, kids well, have nowhere what can else? we do? What can we do? These kids what have nowhere else to go, do? Eric. The malls are closed. Where else are they going to do? You got to hang out on bridges. You got to get them off the streets, not onto different parts of the streets that might be a no, suspension bridge. No, no, their parts bridge. are on different streets is what you mean. That's <laughs> the end result of it. But he's like, oh, well, what can you do? Population control. Weed it out. Darwinism. I mean, all of that I was going to say, it's just Darwinism. Like, there's just... And that's what people keep saying about this other trend where they're jumping in the water. Yeah, this is dumb. This is super dumb because I even think it's dumb when they're doing, uh, when you've got speedboats in the water and they're towing people that are on the inner tubes or they're doing the wakeboards or something yeah. like that. Even that, I think that is dumb. But <laughs> I used to do that to an extent. <laughs> I know. I, I think everybody at some point of their life uh, has has I've done this. Done you've never done that. All right. Well, then. I don't want to fucking break my neck. I'm not stupid. Break it in other ways. Well, I guess your your family just didn't <laughs> Drops love you. Drops cutting boards on it. Your family didn't love you like uh, the rest of ours did, apparently. Mm. No, I had a canoe, Eric. I wasn't <laughs> getting up to speeds where that could happen. And I was fat. So one end of the canoe was like this. It was just like, you know, do, like popping a wheelie across a lake. I always forget you were a larger lad. I have seen some pictures I from was the massive. past. I was like, like 380 pounds, dude. I'm like 200 now. It's so different. <laughs> Look, I was trying to be nice, fatty. But if you want to keep talking about yourself that way. <laughs> that's how, yeah. I mean, that's why I didn't do any of that shit. I was fat. Jordan. Jordan, don't call yeah, the fat kid that. fat. That's not nice. Fatty McGee. Pleasantly plump. So anyway, uh, these people are now, th this trend has been going on where people are jumping off the back of speeding boats to land in the wake 
right behind the boat thinking like they jump off and do a pose or a dive or backflips or something into there thinking it's cool well people have been getting hurt doing this now it's come to the forefront because there was four people i guess in a lake in alabama that were doing this and on the same boat four people that jumped off the boat died from doing this (laughs) they landed they they don't understand when you dive into water how hard water is when from a certain height it's almost like hitting concrete but also like it's not even not even like that it's just the speed alone like if that well, that's, boat's going like that 40, factors into knots, it too yeah yeah like people don't realize that like whiplash is a thing like you can have it even though water is soft or like er mm-hmm. than land yeah at that speed it's like pavement. oh no it's not like yeah when you hit like i used to wakeboard and <clears throat> like just staying up alone and then falling hurts but then you hit the wake you're in the air and god forbid you land wrong right you're right it's like hitting concrete i've i broke my rib doing it i've broken fingers and it's just it you hit that water it it, it it's not forgiving it, it's, it's not, not like, like you're it, just landing in pillows look, you know look that kid that fell off the bridge there and he fell onto concrete but I'm just saying, like, there's people who jump off bridges who try to commit suicide or, or something. And, or mm-hmm. some of them do, uh, the like, the base jumping where they just jump off the bridge and they throw the, the parachute up. And, and sometimes that doesn't work out. But you're falling off a high object to somewhat still water. Hitting it is like concrete. Then throwing in the factor of speed with it, mm-hmm. you're just, you're looking not, like your limbs and stuff aren't ripped off as you're doing it right well that's the thing it's like i don't think people realize that like no they if don't you, if well if you jump out of that boat like you're still going 45 50 miles an hour and they jump out like their hands up like woohoo like not like not realizing that like you're gonna hit that water your neck is gonna fly right back yeah they're right. not you're racing for it they're just speed like ugh, ding dongs yes well um actually you know what i'm gonna stop the timer here real quick because it was about to go off um, I do need to take my hit of my uh, my special elixir, and then we're going to show your you. shit hit. Yeah, my so sh- yeah, my shit I don't hit. know if yeah, you were following you along before you got on here, but Eric's got to drink that entire thing so for his uh, colonoscopy tomorrow. So he's got it mixed in with like Dulcolax and orange Gatorade, and it's chalky and gross. And yeah. I'm hoping before we're done. Look at here, the size of this container. The, the this container. the powder that was in this container is in that bottle there, and I have to drink this whole thing. Do it. You can do it, Eric. I can do it. I'm waiting for the the effects of it, which haven't kicked in yet. So, but I have it all set up. The second that it happens, I can switch off of this and connect to the other thing here, and uh, you can you can follow me on my journey. I don't want to do that. Well, we're going to because that's it's what I promised great. for the show today. I'm telling you, it's the worst and the best situation that we can get ourselves into. Now, uh, here's some videos of the people who wound up, uh, I think, on the left got hurt and the right died. So if I was Oof. reading this right here. So uh, here's the video. So look at that. This is where people were getting hurt. They're jumping off the back of boats into the wake. And here on the right, I think, are the people that... Uh, yeah, that guy next. Yeah. That broke their necks in uh in Alabama. So fucking stupid. It just, so ugh. stupid. So dumb. I, just, I don't I just don't get why everyone's so quick to just kill themselves lately. Because everyone feels that they need to be part of a trend. It's like 7-Eleven Day. You don't like Slurpees. You just think you do because of social media buzz. <laughs> now you see all this dumb shit going on. It's like, oh, I need to do that too. We're going out on the lake. We should try this. <laughs> Or it's the the milk crate challenge where they would stack them up really high and try to walk up to the top and then right. fall down and break your neck. What's oh, the man, point? So many people got hurt on that one. <laughs> right. I saw one the other day that was like going around on Instagram and it was like an old one and like I'm going through it. I'm like, oh, that one hurt. And I go through the comments and they're like, take it down. That girl died. And I was just like, oh shit. And I looked it up and like, yeah, that girl died. Like, and they were people like Snoop Dogg was sharing it. He's like, isn't this funny? It's like, yo, like you can see that girl's face when she falls and lands mm-hmm. on her back and goes like that. Like she's dead. Like <laughs> I've seen that one. And then I've seen the other one where uh, this guy was climbing up the uh, the stacks of the milk crates and like one guy runs over and just kicks the milk crates out while right as he's getting to the top. And that they're should all be laughing. like attempted murder at that point. Right. Like, well, the guy f- landed face into the crates down onto the ground and all that stuff. But the, the kid went over there and kicked them out as he was getting to the peak. 
of the uh, the milk crate mountain there, and uh, the guy just went tumbling down, Oof. and Jill went tumbling after. People yeah, just will no, do whatever no. they want to do. Here's a TikTok challenge: send Gittles ten bucks. So anyone can do it. It's very easy. You won't die. Simple TikTok challenge. Yeah, it'll be bring you good luck, and your lucky numbers are, and then you can win the lottery, and you'll find love. You'll find love. And then call him now for a free reading. Right. Do, do, Gittles is oh, a new it's my auto dialer. Get back here. Oh, no, you don't. Break the legs <laughs> off. off. the legs. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, since we're talking about uh, boats and hoes and people getting hurt on the water and whatever, um, this is next piece isn't about getting hurt on the water, but it's uh, not yet. It's <laughs> not yet. Let's hope not. Cross your fingers. Let's hope yeah, not. Exactly. But um, Gittles, from time to time, you and I have this discussion about our love for cruising and going on cruise ships. And Gittles is not a fan where I am. And one day I'm threatening Gittles that I'm going to have him abducted and he's going on a cruise. So, no. I want to introduce you. You know, the cruise ships that are out r- right now are spectacular. They've got all these different features. They look amazing, and they're just impossibly large. Well, Royal Caribbean has announced their br- their newest cruise ship coming out is the world's largest ship outside I of just, like an aircraft carrier. I don't understand how these things stay afloat. This thing is this thing huge. is huge. Yeah. I want to introduce you, Gittles, to the icon of the seas. Like, if you can build a... I hate all these people. Like, can I go on this boat and just throw bottles at people? Only if they're performing. Ugh, this music, and it's just, ugh. Look, it's a whole neighborhood in the center of the ship. Like, I don't want to do that. Well, you would like be on There's an ice there. rink. I don't go to ice rinks on land. There's zip lines. There's dangerous <laughs> walking on the outside of the ship over the ocean. Wouldn't it be just sad and hilarious that they actually have an aquarium too, where they have like dolphins performing, and they're like just like a plexiglass away from being in the ocean, and they're just looking out there all sad and we're like, no. yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's fucked up. <laughs> like I'm not going on that boat, and then you know why? Because I'm not going on that boat. Well, maybe I should go on that boat so that some other people in a submarine can come down and die trying to take pictures of how I died on a cruise ship. Or it you is, can watch people massive. jump off the back for their TikTok videos as they try to land to the wake of the icon of the seas. Now they died before they even hit the the wake because of the fall yeah but just like the fall damage enough is enough to kill like that with the wake on a cruise ship it's going slow enough like you don't have to worry it's the 500 foot fall from a floating village that's bigger than most towns in upstate new york was right the icon of the sea icon I'm of the sea if there's any like a comparison video like, well royal pictures. caribbean's uh, latest uh, ship is, is supposed to come out january of 2024 the icon of the seas is a mammoth 365 meters long that is t- nearly 1200 feet will weigh uh projected 250,800 tons <laughs> uh for comparison that's like trying to keep uh the two cn towers afloat those, I guess that's the ones in Toronto, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, when it sets to set, uh, when it sets sail on the Caribbean waters, January 2024, it will comfortably hold some 5,600 passengers and 2,350 crew. The boat's piece de resistance will be the world's largest water park at sea, named Category Six. Oh my God! They named it Category Six. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> like that is just asking. Oh for no. I cannot wait till I get to post the video it'll, of that in it'll, Disasters of the Week. It'll feature six record-breaking water slides, plus, uh, but guests who, who want a more leisurely experience can also relax in the boat's seven private pools and nine whirlpools. It's got 19 floors, more than 40 bars, restaurants, and bowling alleys, and it's five times longer or larger and heavier than the Titanic. That is insane. That is insane. I'm trying to see if I can yeah, get this I, thing to. Again, like, how does this stay afloat? I just, I don't know science well enough, I guess, because this thing is massive. I watched some videos on how they make these uh, these giant ships, not just the cruise ships, but like giant military ships and all that. And right. They balance it out with the center of gravity of the ship We're where the pressure and... weighing down on the water balances with the, the pressure to keep it afloat. And then... Uh, 
the the hulls are rounded. They're not sharp. They're edged. They're rounded, so they can always fluctuate within the water. And then they have the two separate tanks off to the side, filled with water, so that if the ship rocks, the water is in the side tank of the ship as it is and balances it out. So it can go. It'll go like this far a little bit, or it'll go that far a little bit, but it keeps it from tipping over. Like yeah, the science on it is ridiculous. How they they get everything together. Look at this. Look at this water park, Gittles. No interest in this? No. You don't want to go really swim in tonic? Have any interest in any of this, Eric. You don't want to go in the lazy river in the middle like, of the... I, the, the, the thing Atlantic. is, I think Eric thinks that I'm, like, really joking about this, but I have, like, a visceral reaction to the idea of being on a cruise ship. Like, I don't want to be on a cruise ship. Ever. So we don't want to broadcast from a cruise ship one of these times? Nope. Damn it. I don't think Gittles really go on go on my discord someone posted about it and every single time it was like cruise ships suck everyone who like who likes cruise ships is an asshole like you're the only person eric i know who likes cruises like i haven't been on a cruise look so I have at this no, thing I, look I have, at that oh my god that is huge yeah i've never been so i can't i don't have a comparison to to say whether or not i like it i want to give it a try one of these times i just this scares me. Like the size of this ship scares me. Like I'll go on a smaller ship. You're right, this Rob. Just, this needs to be a group getaway. I'm telling Gittles you, just go. can't go alone. I'm not going to send him off by himself. No, I'm not. Well, go, I'm not going. Like that's just that's just the reality of the Let's situation. Put a, we'll put a GoPro on him and just like film the panic attacks happening. Bartholomew saying, I'm, uh, I sure would love to be packed in like sardines with 5,000 <laughs> other Bart. people Thank in the you. middle of the ocean and get Thank every you. communicable disease imaginable. Yeah, and then when we're out at sea, COVID three strikes, and I'm stuck in this floating shithole with oh. every person I hate on this planet. Like, no, you don't even know half these people. Or I know the majority I hate of the people, and I hate them. You hate them you because they're on the boat. <laughs> yep, I hate them because they think that this is a good idea for a vacation. Did you see the front of this boat? Did you find, look for the other picture? Like, there's a there's a spot up in the front that looks like it's like a smaller version of that dome in Vegas. <laughs> the front of the ship? All right. This looks see. like it's going to be I'm trying to find the website here. This is nuts. I I Okay, yeah, I see I see a picture here. I'm going to pop this open for everybody. Wait, that did not open. That should have opened and it did not. I got to shrink it. I mean, it this down. is Jurassic Park. This is the spare no expense kind of situation. This is going to be a problem. <laughs> No, this is this is going to be awesome. Look, it's got its own like planetarium or whatever. This is, right? The, the, it's a biodome. Maybe they know something we don't. Look at that. There's going to oh, be a biodome at sea. That is crazy looking. That looks fantastic. Now, can people go up front? Like, it looks like that's like sectioned off where like that's a, like crew only. No, you can go up front. Let's see where we can go right there. Look at that. Everyone seems to be yeah, hanging out the, deck, the back. It says winch. <laughs> it says winch, which is like probably where you tie up the anchor or some shit. No, that's the winch. They're the ones that bring you your lager. No, no, scroll down. That's at one of the bars. It's themed. S scroll down. Go left. Go up. Go up. See, it says winch. Huh. No, it's a winchels. They actually used uh, old wood to make this boat. Oh, even better. It's named after Walter <laughs> I heard Winchell. they made it out of carbon fiber. <laughs> So it'll definitely right. withstand uh, the pressure of Oof. the worst people on earth. Well, your Ugh. people made this, Gittles, and not not the people that we all think of. It this was the Norwegians. <laughs> I was gonna say Irish? Irish Jews don't build fucking Jews aren't very buoyant, but the Norwegians. Yeah. However, no They've Norway, Finland, better. they put out a lot of cruise ships. I think it'll be yeah, fantastic. I Start me off on something a little smaller. I think I might be okay. Going Warren up saying, keep this. bragging about how great your ship is. Always works out. Yeah. I, I, I have a problem with the category six water park. That's that's making me have reservations. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I won't go on that ship. I'll, I'll, I'll go take the tour if it's in port. I'll go walk around and look at it. But maybe I won't go out on that particular uh, ship itself. Um Trashitarian saying people are discussing and this is too many disgusting people packed tightly yeah, together. Ugh. <laughs> and uh, I'm convinced the food is the, uh, I'm not convinced the food is that good. Well, there's restaurants on there. There's some uh, high scale restaurants uh, up there that they do um, sushi uh, sushi restaurants, a steak place. 
Italian place. They have all those outside of the regular dining that you can have on the cruise ship. And then they have the fun stuff, too. Like uh, certain cruise lines have branded burger joints or barbecue places and stuff. Oh, my like, God. Like, think Carnival. Is it Carnival that has it? Somebody has Guy's Burger Joint. No, Carnival uh, has yeah. Johnny Rockets. That's what they have. Um, I think like, Royal see, Caribbean is, has Guy's Burgers Joint. But this is a floating saying, mall. Eric, like, you're not selling it anymore. You're just like, yes, the floating <laughs> mall has the same restaurants that the mall has. Like, is there a so, Sparrow pizza on there, too? Like, get the fuck out of here with this oh, cruise I'd go to Sbarro. In case, you know, walking this, around and you want a hot New York slice, go over to Sbarro's. <laughs> oh, this one has broccoli on it. This thing is almost as long as the Empire State Building is high. Three hundred sixty-five as long as George is wide. <laughs> oh, and like man. the front is bent. Like why is the front bent like that? What's up with that? Bartholomew is saying it's cruise ship Panda Express time. He knows what's up. Three item plate. Get me double this is the worst chicken. idea I've ever heard of. Oh, you go out into the back deck. There's all kinds of new restaurants and stuff for you to try. I'm sure it's fantastic. Somebody said, yeah, no, I, Eric, you are the only person right now who wants to go on this cruise ship. Everyone in chat is agreeing with me. <laughs> Jordan's just like afraid I, to I, say he agrees with me. No, I'm no, just, no. I again, I am. I would like to experience the floating death uh, experience, but maybe not on something that massive, like something of that size. Scares ugh, me. The thing weighs horrible. as much as twelve hundred seven forty seven. I'd rather fly on 1200 747. It's all tied together. <laughs> Just time all together. Let's go. Oof. No. I mean, look, look at this. Look at this. What is it? Another picture of something that looks like a mall? No. This all looks like a mall. Look at that. Yeah, it's the Mall of America. But on the high seas. Giant water park. Slides off the side of the boat where it's clear so you can see yourself slide off the boat. Look, and then we'll zoom right back in. We're in international waters, and if they have a dispensary, would that Look help at that. ease it's your? It's not even covered, so if you hit oh it the God. right angle, you could fly off the boat. <sighs> Those aren't even real people. I think this is an AI generated image. Look she at that. Looks water. Pregnant? Should she be on this ride at, the, at no. this particular point? Nope. Well, yeah, no. She's, that's, maybe that's she's terrifying. trying to not be pregnant. <laughs> I don't know, man. Looks like a good <laughs> time can be had by here. all on this. How does that look like a good time? I don't know. Like that's I just don't understand how that looks like a good time. Like it just like to me, like nothing about that screams good time. Frankie Bronson says, when I see a cruise ship, I see a giant spaceship in progress. Yes, this is probably where they're testing out these new uh applications and, and theories and, and uh, engineering marvels I'm like all right it worked on a cruise ship we're this closer to building the giant spaceship to get us off of here now the other portion of it is I would like to go on one of these themed cruises where there's things that are catered to me like you know you've got Kevin Smith like doing the love boat podcast. reunion cruises that they I do would go on that it's yes. just the a boat around Manhattan that never comes back <laughs> Um, but I just, I don't, I don't, I'm with Gittles where it's like, it, it's hard. It's a hard sell saying, go on this giant floating thing to do the same things you do on land. Right. Yeah. But if it's I, like a, you know, concert thing, like, yeah, you know, I brought this up with you know, the band, but Kohi does their, they do a cruise now where they have like all these emo bands, alternative bands. They do big concerts. Kohi goes on fun. the cruise. Cambria won't go on the cruise. Yeah, no. It's Giddles and Cambria like, will be back at, on, on shore there just waving <laughs> us goodbye and like what a f- bunch of fucking idiots. Giddles and Cambria. That'd yeah. be fun. Hey, I'd watch um, But like, you know, like I said, Kevin Smith is doing his thing where it's like, you know, doing the Smodcast and doing all these different things and reunions and stuff like that. And that's that sounds fun. But going to a floating mall, I could see where the cell is not there for me. And again, I don't want to go on the largest cruise ship in the world. I'd rather go on the the mid tier cruise ship that has a track record of never capsizing. None of these okay. have a, a track record of capsizing. I don't either. ever. What I about don't that need one to in be Italy on the first capsized. one though. Like I the one in Italy is on the captain wasn't paying attention because he was fucking banging some chick, and then he drove the boat into the side, <laughs> shoved the. Oh, so that can't happen on this one? No, 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 no. They get higher eunuchs. No. Oh, this is They've a eunuch. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, exactly. Fine, don't go. More room for the people. Dude, no who one want wants to go. to go on this cruise ship. You want to go. You see I a floating go. mall, and you're like, I want to spend two weeks in a floating mall, and I'm like, no. You know what this is? This, this is, is like, like when Cartman have... gets his own water park. This is like when Cartman goes to Casa Bonita, and he's so <laughs> excited to see the cave divers and everything. Like, oh. Look how much fun! Is like, it's not fun, dude. It's just Speaking it's of, stupid. I like, I'm to sorry to put a damper on your parade, but cruises are fucking dumb, dude. <laughs> sorry, they're not. Fine. More for me, less for you. Yes, more for you. Save the money. Buy someone else a ticket who would like to go. Please, please, Fine. I am begging you. Do It'll just not be Eric and fifty six hundred of his ticket. closest friends. I'm looking at like interior photos of this. It looks like an apartment complex. It's Tresha Terrian says he wants a cruise with Michelin starred chefs. I'm sure there are. If we dig through this Norwegian or I'm sure that there's uh, celebrity probably, cruise, like, yeah, that somebody's tied into all of this stuff. Yeah, yeah like, I don't have enough money for that kind of thing. I want to cruise with Michelin tire chefs, where it's just you know on the side of the boat, so they don't hit the port <laughs> as, they, as they're docking. Yeah, in, the, in your Ocean yeah. Gate sub with your Michelin tires. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> in your exactly. carbon fiber body. That's that's within my price range. I can't do with Michelin stars. So Frankie's saying also saying the class factor is not there. Although I think the Four Seasons has a cruise ship now. The class factor is there. You're not you're not slumming it on uh, on fucking Royal Caribbean. You're going on Carnival or some of those other lines or for the people that are like, oh, it's only three hundred dollars for me to get the you know share a cabin and go on that. That's you don't go on those fucking sh- ships. You don't do those cruise lines. You go on the good ones. You go on Royal Caribbean, Celebrity, Norwegian, one of those three. Very upscale. It's pricey, but you get what you pay for, and it's the right clientele of people. Just saying. Ugh. Just saying. Warm. Preston saying cruise food court. Yeah, that we said that earlier. It's like, it's like the mall in some of the uh, some of the parts of the ship. Yeah, you got a pizza place, a burger place, coffee place. I think Starbucks is on one of the ships. Uh, one of the cruise lines has uh, Starbucks on the ships. Wow, the, some of the worst coffee. You're selling me, Eric. Selling me on this Starbucks. Okay. Now you're going to be a snob about this? Now you're going to say, oh, because the coffee isn't up to par? Well, because you're trying to use it as a selling point, like the largest coffee chain in America. Right. Well, that, that, there's going to be a Starbucks. People I would love expect, Starbucks. There's probably seven Starbucks on that boat. There's a Starbucks across there's from Starbucks. There's probably seven Starbucks on one of the levels exactly. of yeah. that boat. <laughs> That's the Starbucks deck. It's like that Simpsons. <laughs> he's like walking out. He's like, you better hurry up. This place is going to be a Starbucks in five seconds. He's like walking out, drinking the coffee. <laughs> oh, Uh-oh. drink. Up! Oh, someone's got a poop. No, poop. that's not the poop, poop alarm. Poop. That's poop. Uh, I got to do that's more of this. Stuff. Like, imagine alarm. you had to drink this. And now you're on the cruise ship, and now you're on the water slide. <laughs> that's why you have a balcony cabin. Down. You can just hang it over the balcony and and let nature take its course. No, that's not what the poop deck means. It is now because that's the one that the people have to live below that couldn't get the fancier tiers. Could you imagine this one is so big that they still do that the the different classes where you've got a bunch of people in like a boiler room just shoveling coal, shoveling oh, shit. Oh, that's definitely happening on this ship. <laughs> <laughs> it's too big to just run on electricity. I'll agree with Heather here. She's saying Eric's selling points are definitely not Gittle's selling points. Yeah, like it's nothing. Like there, there is not one thing that could make me want to go on this cruise ship. Like just nothing. Like, right. I just no interest. No invite for Gittles. Yeah, please. Thank you. I, that's what I've been saying this whole time. I, I, please don't waste money on me. All right. Uh, we do need to take a break. When we come back, we'll hop into segment two, television, movie, streaming updates. We'll uh, give you some information Ooh, about what's, what's going Ooh, on. What's this? That's Oreos. And uh, then uh, we also have a bunch of trailers we're going to watch because there's stuff that uh, has been coming out and we haven't gotten to it yet. So we will do that and we'll be back right after this. More, it's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. Next. It's Eric Nagel. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, and Facebook. At It's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. He is back. 
Welcome back to segment two on the program, everybody. Eric, Jordan, Giddles here for segment two. two. I hope it's, it's Eric's hoping for segment we two. We need a yes. segment two for Eric. Yes. It'll, hopefully it'll be a quick and painless segment two as we go through all of this two. here. But you know, in- Eric's going to sit down. It's going to be like that Chappelle show, Chappelle show <laughs> sketch where he poops and flies off the toilet. Oh, Or the, uh, the South Park skit where he's just spinning around as the thing just builds and builds and builds. Yeah, we could do all that. All of that's disgusting. Sorry about that. Uh, welcome <laughs> to segment two, where we don't normally talk about that. What we do normally talk about is television, movie, and streaming updates. We follow all this stuff because there's just so much of it out there, and we tell you what's important so that you don't have to waste your time with all of this stuff. Um, in the movie theaters, anything opening this week? This week is Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One. Ooh, I want to do. I do want to see that. I don't know if I'm going to go to the theater for that though. Do I have to? See I, the- I want to, but I don't know if I have time. I hear it's really good. It is a little long. Um, it is a part one, so there's obviously going to be probably a cliffhanger ending. But all the reviews, all the word of mouth, and everyone that I know have seen it has said it's been amazing. So I haven't been disappointed with one of the Mission Impossible movies. They've all been pretty solid. Every right. director that's taken a cur- you know taken the stab at whatever they're doing has done great. They all feel awesome. Um, I'm excited. I want to see it. I was going to go last night couldn't go um so i'm gonna probably try to catch it this weekend at some point i want to uh, i think i'm gonna go that's something I, I, I need to do then i think i'm gonna go back and watch all the movies back to mm-hmm. back and then lead up to this one if i have some time next week maybe i'll sneak over to the movie theater and, and see it um, yeah christopher mcquarrie is the director of this one he's done the last couple it started off De palma did the first one and then John Woo, and then they had J.J. Abrams do it, and then Macquarie's taken on four through this latest one. Um, is this the sixth one, right? Seventh. Seventh. It's number seven. Okay, and this is a two-parter. Yeah, apparently, yeah. I saw something in uh, recently. Tom Cruise said that he wants to do Mission Impossible movies for the rest of his life, as long as they'll let him do it. I mean, what do you mean, let him? These, these things are cash cows. Yeah. Like, they, 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 like so I said... Money. They haven't been bad. All of them have been good in their own way. Everything has been solid. I mean, especially um, the last like couple, last three or four have been just great. And they've all kind of continued this kind of storyline with also being kind of self-contained. They're almost like trilogies right. within this whole thing. So, I, I again, I have never been disappointed in them. Um, and I'm excited to see this new one. They're bringing back characters from the first movie, this character named Kitteridge. So that's like I was going to ask, you, like, do you need to watch all the movies to keep going with these Mission Impossible? I don't, like, can I, I don't just show up to one and watch them? You could probably show up and watch them. Like I said, they it, it always helps. It doesn't mean I don't think it's detrimental if you didn't, though. Now, part six, this last one and then the one before it have the same bad guy involved. And so I think those are ones that you really kind of have to pay attention to. But I mean, if you watched part one and you go to part two, it's not going to make a difference. Like they were almost self-contained stories. They almost did them episodic like the TV show. It's not until they went with Ghost Protocol where they started kind of doing this overarching storyline with some of the more recurring characters. So, but I, I think they're all really good. Fallout was amazing. And so, but yeah, that one's this out. I think this the week. last one I saw was Ghost Protocol. I that think was that was the like the fourth one, right? Fourth one, yeah. Yeah, so I, I yeah, got to go back. Was that the one with Simon Pegg? Simon Pegg came in um, during part three with J.J. Abrams directing. Okay. <laughs> so he's been kind of reoccurring. Um, I think the character's name is Benji. And yeah, he's been reoccurring since part three in some capacity. Um, getting a little bit more screen time in most of it. But yeah, part three is kind of, he was like the, the Q type. He was just like behind the scenes. But then now he's, you know, more involved, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Well, I gotta go back and rewatch all of them. That's fun to do, especially when you have a, a franchise like that and you haven't seen a movie in forever. Go back mm-hmm. and watch all of them before you go see the new the new one. Why not? Why not do that? Uh, next weekend is uh, is an interesting spotlight on the box office because these two movies shouldn't have anything to do with each other except social media made it a thing because mm-hmm. it's like when they started Brangelina. You know, combining celebrity names to to have a branding title for a relationship. So now this is Barbenheimer, and people are going with this. It's like, yeah, the Barbie movie and Oppenheimer opening the same weekend. It's like they're not the same audience that is going to see 
This They're movie. not. I know a but, lot of people who are double booked already. No, I'm, I'm sure going, I'm people going to both will of them. see it, but the audience in, in large is not the same audience for that movie that it would be for this one. I me maybe it's me personally, but I feel like the Barbie movie is marketed towards an older crowd. The Barbie movie is not meant for kids. It's an adult yeah. That's movie. what I was gonna say. Like it's not meant for kids. No, and that has been a lot of confusion for people leading up to this. People are like, oh, a Barbie movie. They're gonna take the kids and the family and stuff. And they've been putting out like uh, the uh, the cast that's and and directors and stuff that have been on like the Today Show, TMZ, things like that. All those extra, they're all saying it's like this isn't a kids movie. Like this is an adult movie. Yeah. So be careful when you're we're coming in. There's adult situations. There's they're talking about death. They're talking about a whole bunch of things. This isn't just a Barbie girl in a Barbie world kind of you know concept for this thing it's harsh reality that the thing becomes self-aware i think was the concept of this movie and, and moves out of malibu or whatever Barbie's, barbie land barbie whatever. land whatever it is and then sees the real world so john uh, cena's in it john cena's in There's it a lot of people in this movie it's a huge cast shoots magoots. Like that's what's funny is that both movies are similar in a way where their the casts are huge like there are big names in both of these movies and i think that's why it's such a big deal is that when you see two big movies, especially during the summer, a lot of the time, some they, when they play chicken like this, one of them moves. They're like, we don't want to, you know, uh, cannibalize the box office. Let's let have you have a weekend. We're going to do our weekend, and we're right. going to see. Who Having both release on the same day was kind of a big deal, and it, you know, you don't see a lot of movies do that nowadays. It just reminds so. me of the UHF summer when like everything released the same weekend. Oh, <laughs> it, like and it just the most destroyed craziest it. Blockbuster weekend ever. And it kind of feels like we're, we're, maybe we're getting back to that now, where it's just like these big movies. I mean, like Oppenheimer, huge cast. Barbie, huge cast. Mm -hmm. Asteroid City, mega cast. Like these are huge ensemble pieces that are coming out. By the way, I saw Asteroid City. I still have to you finish it? it. Are you going to um, go finish it in the bathroom with Asteroid City? Smiling does not make the joke any more funnier. <laughs> Although, yes, it does. Um, the uh, I, I got... I'm pretty far along into it. I haven't finished the movie yet. But I'm sitting there at some, at some point just staring at this, and it's like the, the crusty um, meme where after he watched uh, the, the, the Russian what replacement. What I Yeah, he's like, what the hell was that? When the cigarette's hanging off his mouth and he's shooting his hands out like this. I'm sitting there watching you. some of this stuff, and I go like the the fucking Pee Wee Herman's uh, the Pee Wee's Playhouse claymation moment with the alien. Yeah, the alien. I'm watching this thing, I, and the I, things yeah, just like staring at each other, and I'm laughing at it. Yeah, he poses for a photo, and then he, <laughs> he just takes for off. A photo. I was like, "What? Why is this in the movie?" But I don't know. I, I'll say Again, this: I, I like the setting. The setting looks great. Exactly. I think I have to I just go. couldn't describe this to people. Like, I don't know how to sell this to people, and I can't sell this to a wider audience. This this is a very, like, niche movie for people. All right, you I think really I actually like have to go. Really so you're going to finish talking about the rest of this stuff here because uh, I'm going to bounce. I'll be back. I'm so excited. Yeah, do it up. Yeah, I... Um, I'm, oh, Did God. you watch it? I know, right? <laughs> can you hear me? I, hey, we can hear you. Okay. I'm so, mute. so did you... You watched Asteroid City, right? No, I haven't yet. I haven't oh, okay. watched that, like any movies in a minute. I watched the last movie Walking I watched down was that hall. crime wave movie, which was like one of the worst <laughs> things I've ever seen. I remember uh, it was from like 1984 or something like that. It was written by the Coen Brothers, directed by Sam Raimi, and starred Bruce Campbell, and it was god awful. I um, I when you told me what the title was, I looked it up. I think you had the title wrong originally. I looked it up, and I was like, that's not the right movie. Was and it then crime I spree used, or crime wave? I think it was crime spree or something like that. Okay. And then you sent the like the picture of the movie, so I looked it up. Yeah, it it has the makings of something that could be fun, and it just looks horrible. It's so bad. Like I, the, the worst part is it's literally all three of them in it being themselves. So it's like Oof. Sam Raimi, like wild, you know, camera zooms and directing, but then like parts of it are all film noir. Cause it's like oh, Coen so. brothers. And then Bruce Campbell is literally <laughs> just like hail the King, baby. Like it is it's so ridiculous. Bruce Bruce. Got it. All right. So if you're uh, just coming in, Eric has made his way to the restroom, Eric, uh, what's going on in there? Is everything uh, coming well, out okay. There are, uh, there are, yeah, it is. It's not the <laughs> event that I was hoping for. Ah. Um, but, um, Did you get tickets to the event? That could be why. 
there, there's progress being made. There's people throwing stuff at him as he's sitting there. But you know what the best part is? Eric's going to get up to come back, and it's going to hit and him. It's going to hit. He's just going to die in the hallway. That's exactly what I was thinking. The, like the, the all right. This is the initial takeoff, if you will. The second round is going to be probably the most explosive. This is like when you get the like the little mini earthquakes before the big earthquake. It's going to be volcano all over again. It's going to be great. Ugh. Um. Well, while we're waiting for Eric to literally die, uh, we've got uh, what we do in the shadows is coming back. I think it's uh, is it this week or next? I think this week. Eric, Eric, we know what Eric's doing in the shadows right now. He's trying to poop. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got that coming out. That's going to be good. Um, I got this it, coming out. So just oh, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Uh, Harley Quinn season four at the end of this month is also uh, making its way to uh, very streaming. Let's see. It's coming out on Max. It's an HBO property. Um, Disney Plus has Ahsoka coming out. They just released a new trailer for that. That looks awesome. Disney said that they're going to just they're going to cut back on Marvel and Star Wars stuff because everything is oversaturated. It's like you, you just realize that now. Well, I mean, I think the market changed and it's uh it's 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 uh changing a lot of things. So streaming is going to be tightened back. I mean, that's part of kind of what we're dealing with in segment 2 here is that are people actually excited for the Asaka thing because they did not like the Boba Fett series. They didn't like really the third season of The Mandalorian. Are they going to enjoy this? It's uh, it's Star Wars fans. People are going to complain about everything, and they're going to be happy about everything. It's just one of those things. I think with Ahsoka, it's continuing a story that everyone loved with um, Rebels, which is going to be really good. We're going to get some closure on Rebels because that ended kind of in an ambiguous way. Um, we're going to see characters brought to life on the big sc- on well small screen that we haven't seen in live action like. Uh, um, Grand Admiral Thrawn, which they showed in this new trailer. He, he, <laughs> that's Grand Admiral Prawn. Uh, yeah, that would be the uh, the Muppets uh, like like spoof of it or something. Pepe or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it would be Pepe. The, the prawn, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, this looks Ooh. really. It looks really. Oh no! How you doing, Eric? Are we good? Uh, it feels like. I guess this is what like contractions <laughs> feels like. Oh, oh man. like you know, the worst part is like we haven't heard anything yet. Like I've taken X lax and shit before. Like you know when that shit's right. gonna erupt. You're that's why hear- I, I, that's why I said this. It wasn't really the the experience that I was hoping for for this. That's why I think the second round is going to be the payoff. Well, that. let me My- tell you something. If you're taking X lax, never trust a fart. So if you feel like one coming on, get no. to the bathroom because otherwise you are going to be leaving uh, mud trails everywhere you go. Yeah, I definitely picked the wrong day to wear the white MeUndies. Ugh. All right. Uh, just to let you know, I can't bring it up on screen. I don't have the ability. But uh, Dead Fool in the uh, YouTube chat has uh, graciously donated and has messaged you, Eric, to concentrate and breathe. So yeah, it's sure, uh, like contractions. <laughs> just breathe. You know, damn forty nine ninety nine to see Eric shit. That's wild. My favorite part is that he didn't round up to an even number. Like it was a that's that's fantastic. I like that. Well, if you call um, in now, you get the last payment free or whatever. <laughs> he's he's on an installment plan. That was his down payment. Um, so yeah, no, I think Ahsoka is going to be fun. Ah, I thought I thought that was something coming out. No, no, the second, I'm telling you, the second time NASA. will be a, will be a doozy. I cannot I cannot wait. Oh, so Eric, God. are you going to space now? <laughs> what we did find out is that Eric does not have a bidet system in this uh, the downstairs bathroom. We would have heard that. That'll be bidet that I die. <laughs> so he. Damn it! I may have to change the show title now. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be bidet. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna write that down because I'll forget and you'll forget. That's funny. Oh, well, he's right. gone. Oh, wait. I don't think he went anywhere. I think he's pooping in that seat and he just changed the monitor. No. He's just sitting on a commode. <laughs> <sighs> 
Oh my god, it, uh, it knocked my hair out of place. <laughs> Your hair is always out of place, Eric. Uh, press well, I'm C. sorry that wasn't quite the show you wanted. Opie would love a pick, yeah. Opie would love a lot of things that ain't happening. Um, oh yeah, sorry, this was what you were talking about here. This was, uh, why can't I find it? Nope. That's milks. milks. What? That, was <laughs> what? Not, that was not what I was looking for. Man, I love farting. This is uh, Deadpool here. Concentrate and breathe, Eric, for the super chat. Thank you very much. I love much, that Deadpool. picture because it's not the shagging wagon from uh, hey, uh, Dumb and Dumber. It's just like a winter boot. <laughs> it does, yeah, with it wheels does, on I couldn't, it. It's just a winter boot with wheels. I, like, I think tell I had what that those was boots. For a second. All right. Well, that is you. a winter boot. Thank you that so much. That is pretty cool. Ah. Uh, there is a rumbly in my tumbly. I will definitely tell you that. We'll see how it goes. Oh, and I made it back in time. Uh, I've got a couple more minutes before I have to... Uh, Drink your next... Uh, refuel. Look, we're making progress. Look at it. It's almost done. It's like halfway done. Oh, you're at the halfway point. Nice. All right. Halfway point. So Breathe, we know what's coming out in the immediate future. We know that nothing is going to be coming out in the distant future because of the... Uh, well, I uh, think I something's strike coming out in the near future for Eric. <laughs> well, we're looking, we're 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 looking for that. That could be either coming soon or a this weekend disaster. We there's haven't a, figured it out yet. There's a theory going oh, around. Well, we're going to part two now, so there's a theory <laughs> going around about the the writer strike. Okay, is that a lot of the heads of the or a lot of the top people at, at all these networks top men have figured out and maybe even conspiring with each other for all of this that they realize that they can kind of uh starve them out i guess is the term Wait for out, for the yeah. strike so that eventually that nothing's being made for the fall season there's no nothing being made for the holiday season which are big cash times for everybody that they're just going to let the the riders go broke before they uh come to the negotiating table and say okay well we'll we're willing to do this you're desperate enough now to sign anything yeah i mean and i've heard that, that is... from riders uh, actual people in the guild where they say like i think this is going on right now because this is taking too long and they're not negotiating with them what are we at month almost two now started at the beginning of may so yeah we're two yep. and a half, almost two and a half months into it I mean that's fine. Like I mean, if the, like if these if that's what they're gonna do and they're gonna like starve people out, then like no one's gonna want to work for these people. You know what I mean? Like it's just yeah, it's gonna be a really weird time because if the writers don't want to work for these people and they just go and start doing other things, then you're not gonna get people coming in to replace these people because like I just saw what you did to those people. Why would I come in here? Because you're gonna do the same thing to me. You'll get people that will take a job no matter. I was gonna how say, bad they're, they're gonna being get treated but want to get their get... foot into the business kind of people so i mean they're still gonna find people they may not be up to the caliber of what we you know the the writers that are out there now but you'll never run out it's just it's where does this where do they stop you right know, at what point do they actually negotiate because a lot of the argument is is like you know you're you're not wanting to negotiate not wanting to pay us a living wage you're not willing to restructure some of these deals for streaming and AI generated content and things like that. Right. And this is coming into play a lot with the, the actors guild and the directors guild and all these guilds that are now going to be striking as of today. Um, don't cry. Pro you know, Oh, got a drink. Yep. Got a drink. drink Go ahead. Drink, uh, drink, drink, drink. They're crying poverty and that they're losing all this money, but you know, it, it, Bob Iger is making a bonus of $25 million a year. You know, they're, they're, the money is there. You guys have just allocated it to the people and the heads of studios. Well, also, and you have not invested in the staff that is keeping you guys employed. Well, you also have to remember a lot of these people who are on these shows, like, they don't get any royalties from any of these replays on Netflix, on any of these streams. No. Like, you don't get anything special for that. But, like, I have a friend growing up who still gets royalties from a song his aunt sang in the 50s. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so it's just wild how things have like changed with like, you can write a I show. I guess writers' like, royalties for music is way different than writers' royalties for TV and, and movies. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is like the like how come like the writer like the people who create these shows don't like they don't get anything when it goes into like syndication when it goes on Netflix when it goes on any of these streaming services like there's nothing that like well, and that's then that's the point is right now is that 
you know, you used to have syndication, you used to have reruns, and that was all over the air, and that was the, what the deals that were struck with the unions and stuff like that. But now that streaming is now taken the forefront of all things. I mean, you've got, you know, you've had Warner Brothers and now Disney pulling stuff off their streaming services to avoid paying royalties, to take these mm-hmm. big massive tax write-offs. What's to say that that's how they're going to start doing things from now on. Well, if I'm not, if I don't want to pay you, I'm just going to get rid of the content. It's better for us just to not have it than to have to pay you. So that's their, that's their biggest, you know, I can't say gripe, but that's their biggest concern is that they're not going to get paid for that. I mean, they're structuring deals now where they want to pay actors and actresses to lend their voice and lend their image for a set fee and then in perpetuity can use them for these AI generated things or these deep fakes or right. these, you know, these things that they're doing now. And there's no deal in place for that sort of thing. And it's just because the the technology has gone so quickly that they were not ready for it. And now they're like, well, we have to get these deals done. We're going to get screwed and you guys are going to make millions and millions of dollars. Did you mention and that's what the biggest issue is? Did you mention the uh, the quote from Bob Iger? No, I haven't that, got to that part okay. yet. Okay, so Bob Iger, if you're not familiar, was the former head of uh, Walt Disney, the CEO, was there for the longest time. He replaced Michael Eisner, right? Yeah, he replaced... Uh, who was also... No, I think I think there was someone between Eisner and, and him. Okay, well, look. Bob Iger's been there forever, and then he uh, left a couple of years ago. He stepped down, still had a hand in some things, but he wasn't running the show anymore, and they brought that other guy in for a few years and everyone hated J-Pack. everybody Ugh, hated all his decisions uh this company wasn't doing well to the point that they brought bob Iger back they booted the other guy to bring him back to fix all of this stuff mm-hmm. now he said uh, i don't want to keep doing this i'm only going to do this for about two years because of this agreement and then, and then i'm done well they just redid his agreement he's here for six years mm-hmm. right so it doesn't seem like he was complaining about signing a six-year deal for what they offered him and everything. Uh, but he was just on uh, CNBC the other day, and they were asking him about the the writer strike because it's holding up a lot of projects for Disney, for every major company that's out there right now. And he says, it's, excuse me, it's uh, very disturbing to me. We talked about disruptive forces on this business and the challenges we're facing, the recovery from COVID, which is uh, ongoing and not completely back. This is the worst time in the world to have this disruption, Iger said. I understand any labor organization's desire to work on behalf of its members to get the most compensation and be compensated fairly based on the value uh, that they deliver. We managed as an industry to negotiate a very good deal with the Directors Guild that reflects the value with the directors uh, contribute to this great business. We wanted to do the same with the writers. We wanted to do the same thing with the actors. There's a level of expectation that they have that's just is not realistic. And that uh, and they are adding to the set excuse me. And they are adding to the set of the challenges that this business is already facing that is quite frankly very disruptive. I don't really know those details. Like I, none of us really know the these inner details, no. but now it's just it's a he said they said kind of thing where oh it's the bosses versus the the unions kind of deal. It doesn't look like this is going to get uh, settled anytime soon. So no, you're not going to have like I said any fall stuff. You know if if you uh, of an older demographic where you looked forward to the fall season on television, new dramas, sitcoms. Essentially, it's the start of a lot of TV networks uh, seasons because of advertising and stuff. That's not happening. You've got Christmas coming up. Christmas is five months away, and you're not going to have the new Christmas movies, the new releases, new specials, the television episodes. Any of that stuff's not going to be done and ready for Christmas time. So you're already pushing through the winter movie season. What about of all next the Hanukkah year. specials, Eric? The what? The Hanukkah <laughs> specials. Not familiar with that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. There's none. So um, the. They're already pushed into the winter and the spring at this point. You know, you're not going to have your spring uh, your spring releases and then going into next year's summer blockbuster releases if this keeps going by the end of the right. year. You're not going to have this stuff in time. Whatever that is st- still coming out and people like to say, oh, they still have stuff coming out. That's going to dry up really fast. 
Well, I mean, they, because of the actor strike, they've had to stop production on everything. So everything that was going on that is filming for I next thought year, they stopped. Wait, I thought they came to a temporary term with the Actors Guild so that they didn't go on strike. Did that? I'll have to look it did up. That pass after, and then they went up on strike. I heard that SAG was just going to go into it with like uh, like a solidarity type thing because they have nothing to act in because no one's wrote anything. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have things like with like Deadpool that's currently filming. They have a script They're They are following the script. They can't write any more new shit. Um, but, you know, they they are in the middle of doing that stuff. Um, as far as I know that the the actor strike um, affects certain things and not others. Like you have uh, House of the Dragon can still film because they are all English actors. Mm-hmm. They are all filming in England and their union doesn't follow the same SAG after a union rules and cannot legally join in solidarity. So they can still film. So gotcha. they'll still get some of this stuff out. But you've got things like uh, all these conventions. Um, San Diego Comic Con's coming up. Nobody can participate in it. No actors, no studios are going to do anything with oh, I it. I didn't know that. You can't. You can't promote because in the middle of the UK premiere of Oppenheimer, right in the middle of it, all the actors left. They can't promote. You Legally, if you're on strike, you cannot promote anything. So you've you've got all these cons. So I don't San know Diego, how Comic Con. Look, San Diego. We talked about this in the past. San Diego is having trouble because of Disney. Yeah, has celebration, which is their all their worldwide Star Wars convention, and it's mm-hmm. huge. They have it's so big they have to have it uh, every was it, every two they years. They have it every it, year. Every yeah, but every two years it has to be back in the United States because they got to yeah. take it overseas. So. It's that big. Plus, then they have D23, which is all things Disney celebrated in their own convention, which is also a huge international draw where they can do Marvel. They can do Pixar. They can do all of their stuff there. Even Star Wars, if they didn't do everything at at Celebration, they could do the rest there. There was no need to be at San Diego anymore for the Mm -hmm. big Saturday uh, releases in Hall H. Then Warner Brothers is having all their problems with DC right now. So they're not ready to promote anything anymore. So you don't have them. What, well, what is then, San Diego? COVID, Go ahead. With COVID DC did their own little thing too. Remember right. they, they did their own little mini DC. This is what's coming up. This is all our DC slate. And they combined all the comic book stuff. They combined all the TV and the movies. And that's what they did. I think that's the route they're going to continue to go. But no I'm one saying needs all to of, go to these conventions. All of this stuff. Yeah. was a real hindrance to, San Diego, because San Diego used to be the big reveal spot. Now mm-hmm. a lot of these companies don't need San Diego as much as San Diego needs them. Throw in this thing now where the actors are not appearing to... It's like, you don't have Hall H. You don't have any of that stuff anymore. You don't have the big Saturday yeah. trailer reviews or uh, reveals and, you know, surprise guests on the stage, you know, that, that you didn't know were going to be in the movie or here. None of that's right. happening now. It's so funny that we were talking about this because I literally just got a targeted ad no joke that says the sag after start strike starts tonight at midnight yep so um union members will will be able to join the wga's picket lines tomorrow friday july 14th as a result productions that are part of sag after tv and film contract must stop immediately yeah i got the so official is, strike bulletin here this uh, is the Except, uh, let's see, uh, members may not be able to work on projects produced by uh, non-AMPTP related production companies under these agreements if projects qualify for an interim agreement, a list of projects, blah, blah, blah. Uh, So this is what you, uh, it says all covered services performing work under the uh, TV theatrical contracts must be withheld. So that's principles on camera. So anyone acting, singing, dancing, performing stunts, piloting on craft, on camera aircraft, puppeteering, performance capture, motion capture work, ADR looping, TV trailers, theatrical trailers, voice acting, singing, narration, including audio descriptive service such as commercials, podcasts, background work, stand in work, photo and body doubles, fittings, rehearsals, scannings, interviews, like. You can't give out tours of TV studios during this. Fan expos, festivals, panels, award shows, junk. Like it is mm-hmm. insane. Anything how that anyone's involved. Is. Yep. 
it's the first time the writers and the the actors and the actors guild and stuff like that have sh- have had a strike at the same time since like the 60s yeah you can't be on podcast appearances social media like anything panels for your consideration events conventions interviews studio showcases performing on a trailer for a struck production uh will have you marked as basically a scab Mm -hmm. like they are not i mean they just announced all the emmy nominations i don't think that's gonna go that's it yeah no that's an award show that's an award show you'll get your award on the the you know whenever we're done and this is all effective tonight at midnight like all this stuff goes on strike tonight at midnight so that means People are going to have to narrate their own commercials, which I am very excited for. Uh, I'm tired of all these good voiceover actors. We need more people who who aren't good at speaking well or goodly. And I want them like, you know, reading off the commercials like, yeah, come down to Applebee's. We got half price apple ties. I I can't read this, Jimmy. Bachelor City. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I'm Billy Applebee's. Come down to my restaurant. (laughs) Yeah. Good. That is GI Fridays. Get that. Good eating in the neighborhood. Yeah, my neighborhood. Get out. Come for the riblet basket. Stay for the camaraderie. Yeah, hot. yeah. I'll be there to open the door. Just give me a few minutes. I'll get you a menu. Then I'll cook your food. <laughs> can't do all exactly. of that. Oh, that's not the ones I was looking for. Uh, that was there. This all sounds amazing. I can't wait. And what it's going to be saying? a really good time to be get into video games. Like, seri- <laughs> that's going to be what you're going to be into. Frankie Bronson, the valets in Hollywood are the real losers. Here. <laughs> yeah, that says velvets in Hollywood. <laughs> Does it say velvets? Oh, I thought yes. it said valets. Maybe he meant valets. Isn't velvets like a sex shop or something like that? Or, or like, wasn't that like one of those things? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Velvet Joe. I don't know. And then again, for the millionth time, he just posts milfs. Milfs. I don't know. Yeah, you know what? Frankie's having man. his own show going on in the in the chat there. Good. <laughs> he for always him. does. Anyway, oh, uh, he said yes. I did mean val- valets. So okay. Good, 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 good. Um, so like, this brings well, this brings the that. entertainment industry industry to a crippling halt. So yeah, well, it wasn't that entertaining to begin with. But is, well, the last time we had a big strike a couple years ago, we had bad TV, and that's what struck all the uh, the reality TV to really hit its stride. Like that's why we were stuck with all that crap. Yeah, and oh, I know. I, I was saying the first episode of season <laughs> six. <laughs> Black Mirror, it's perfect on the AI actor's dilemma. Yeah, the, the whole hologram English stuff. Well, you got to watch it. Oh, get, that get first episode's it. fun. It is. Um, yeah, so we'll see how this goes. Maybe it brings the industry to its knees, and then all the companies have to renegotiate uh, with this because they can't keep going forward. So, Wouldn't it be great if this just like destroyed all these plus systems and everything just went back to how it was before everything had an individual subscription service? I'd see my problem is it's not so much that I don't like the subscription services because there are some things I don't get some things I do yeah I think it's the need to saturate the market with stuff that no one cares about like that's what we're gonna see and the argument is is well the rush for content over quality yeah exactly and we, maybe we can get back to quality maybe we can get back to not having to pay these actors huge sums of money to put in mediocre work uh, you know, we, like all these movies are losing millions and millions of dollars. You know why they cost so much? We have to pay whatever actor five hundred million dollars. So yeah. then everything else suffers because of it because we have you know Harrison Ford in it playing whatever. Yeah. No, let let's let's restructure a few things. Let's let's put in the quality and in, in, instead of the quantity. And I'm fine with superhero movies. I'm fine with superhero shows. I am enjoying Secret Invasion. But at some point, we have to start putting things out that are you know worth watching i liked asteroid city but it's not going to make money because no one's going to the no. movie theaters to see asteroid city they want to go see the big blockbusters but those aren't even making movies because nobody wants to go to the theater they want to sit at home i do so want to go something see uh, insidious the big red door whatever that, that made a ton called. of money that had a 14 million dollar budget it was directed by uh the main actor in the movie and it made twenty eight million dollars in the first weekend, beating out Indiana it, Jones that weekend. Wait, who's the? Isn't it Patrick Wilson? Patrick Wilson directed it, and yeah, okay. he sings a song with Ghost on the soundtrack. He lives near fourteen me. million dollars. He lives near. Get me. him on the show. Well, no, you can't. He's no, on the years ago, I used to see him like at Starbucks and places. He just walk in, and get his coffee, and I'm like, oh, this is Patrick Wilson. But yeah, he directed the movie. It, it, it's cost fourteen million dollars, which you know is a lot of money, but it's not not in movie terms, and it made twice its budget in the first weekend. Why don't we and look at the trailer? Horror movies are just going to make tons of money because they go low budget, 
they do what they need to do and they make a ton they make a ton of money let's look at the trailer for the the movie that we we're talking about by the way the new uh insidious i mean the reviews for the movie are saying that you know it does have jump scares that it relies on but otherwise it's a pretty solid movie and i'm like all right i'll see it yeah eh. <laughs> i'm for it i'd go see it but see here's the thing like that's gonna make money but little indie movies like um the one me and Giddles want to see. What it's outlaw gonna, Johnny Black? Outlaw Johnny Black. That no, is that gonna be hilarious. It looks great. I love the first movie they did. I just I don't think it's gonna make any money. Oh, it's probably not. I mean, the, they said the first and movie they did, up. they had like a thousand dollar budget or something like that. And like, <laughs> it we barely shows. made that back. Yeah, they're like the movie we're talking about. The original, uh, well, not the original, but the same group of people that made the movie. Um, they did Black Dynamite. And one of the that was a movies. spoof of seventies black exploitation. It's fucking hilarious. It's one of my favorite movies. It's so good. And the same group of people, same actors, everything came together to do a spoof of what was it like seventies or sixties like westerns, like black westerns. Yeah. And it's called the Outlaw Johnny Black. I don't know what this means. Uh Ha- Halloween Horror Nights. It's the Universal like. Oh, that's that I didn't there. understand the abbreviation. Yep. Uh, so, uh, Miles. Uh, oh, is this Molly? Hi, Molly. Uh, this needs to be uh, a house at the Halloween Horror Nights. Oh, that that makes sense then. I think they've done those kinds of things. I know this year their big thing for Halloween Horror Nights is going to be The Last of Us. I think they have a they have a new house this year for The Last of Us, and they have they have multiple. So like they'll have like I think last year they did like Halloween Two and you know, all these different properties. So I'm, okay. I'm sure they'll have insidious again at some point. All right. Let's, uh, you guys were talking about, let's take a look at outlaw Johnny black here. Let's see what this yeah, is. This gonna this be one. Great. <laughs> the, yeah. The, uh, black dynamite is probably one of my favorites. And I, I loved it because it's... like, I still quote things from the fiendish Dr. Wu. There was like a part of that shit before I walked in the room. Yeah. <laughs> he threw like, like a knife or something. And then he walks into a room, he's talking to like the, the typical like Chinese gangster, fiendish Dr. Wu. And then all of a sudden something comes through the window and cuts the guy's hand off. And he's like, ah, I threw that shit before I got in here. And it was just so <laughs> oh, it's stupid. So good. And it's, it's so funny. I, watch that I just play. I love this scene where he's talking with the dude, but the dude is just like reading the the script and all the subtitles. So he's just like militant turns startled, and then he like turns and like so he's like reading like oh, the Black camera. Dynamite. Yeah, he's like reading the camera directions. Oh, it's there was so good. there was a part in Black Dynamite where like someone was talking to somebody and it, he was supposed to slap somebody and yeah. accidentally slaps the actor. And he got pissed, so they the next scene does a quick cut, and it's like a stunt guy instead because yeah. like he got beat up or something. <laughs> it's 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 intentionally bad, and I think that's what makes it so fun. It's so funny. It's like one of the one of the like hands down like laugh out loud movies. Like if you've right. never seen Black Dynamite, just go watch Black Dynamite. It is I'm gonna I'll find the director. It's Michael Jai White. He directed. Is he directing this one? Because yeah. I know he had a big hand in the first one. Because yeah. I think yeah, they even made up a with the first one. Like, yeah, they because they did the Adult Swim Black Dynamite show, which was actually pretty funny too. Okay. But yeah, watch that. I haven't watched it. But all right, yeah, Michael J. White. That's cool. Next week we got more trailers to watch. There's a lot more uh, still to in Black Dynamite when, when he's talking to the two girls on the street. She's like, my mommy says my daddy's name is Black Dynamite. Oh, and, the girl. girl's like, and the girl's just like, no, my mommy says my daddy's name is Black Dynamite. He's like, uh, shut up, little girl. Uh, he's like, shut up, little girls. And he like, that name. <laughs> yeah, because he's trying to like talk to a, a woman and like get her number and stuff like that. And then they're just like saying, yeah, my daddy's also named Black Dynamite. Uh, shut up, little girl. <laughs> it's just so funny. <laughs> So and lots, it's just you lots know, of cats have that name. A lot, a lot of nudity, and yeah, it's just it's pure black exploitation, but done in like the early two thousands. When he's just trying to hang up the phone off screen, and he just doesn't do it. He's just like sitting there, just jangling the phone for like a minute. <laughs> he's just trying to get it on the receiver. You can see like boom mics every now yeah, and then. Yeah, it's like a boom mic in the shot. Oh, it's so perfect. It's good. What if Definitely they right did <clears throat> a remake, a black remake of Cannibal the Musical? That, I mean, I mean, I don't know why they would do that, but I'd, I don't know I'd how to well, watch it. Brought to you by the people that. who made Cannibal the Musical, and then it's just called Black Cannibal the Musical, and they just have an all black cast doing it. I, I mean, mean, what makes Cannibal the Musical so good is that it's so bad. Yeah. So, like, I don't know if you can recreate that, like, unintentionally. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Because like they, I wouldn't like, put even it past. If you watch Matt. It, when you watch it with the commentary, they're like, "This is a bad movie." Like we don't know what we were <laughs> doing. Like we filmed this in college. I mean, then they get drunk and at the end. They're like, "Yeah, this movie fucking rocks." <laughs> <laughs> I think they get it, up halfway. They get up halfway through the the commentary to go to a strip club, and then they come back drunk <clears> and they're still doing the commentary. Like, oh shit, the movie's still see, paused. <laughs> that's back when like commentary was fun on like these Blu-rays and yeah. the DVDs and things like. Because like the commentary for Armageddon, like Ben Affleck got drunk too, and he was oh, just like so talking good. about like Michael Bay telling him to shut the fuck up, this, <laughs> leave the science to me and shit. Like it is just hilarious, and I, you don't get that anymore. Like you don't nope. get some of those things. They usually just get like some dumb you know podcast group that you know talks about talks movies about and then it. they talk about the movie in like real technical terms and no i just want drunk actors doing stupid shit on the I, behind the scenes like that i found so many <clears throat> good commentary tracks like there's so many bad ones but like when you find a good one you're like oh this is awesome i'm so right. glad i found this like total recall paul verhoven and arnold schwarzenegger oh, pronouncing yeah. words wrong for two hours it is Brilliant. Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, Arnold's Conan, drunk Arnold's through the drunk. whole thing. Yeah. yeah, he's drunk in that. Arnold, any Arnold commentary on Terminator Three, he's just talking about how his favorite part of the movies was the robot who could make her boobs grow bigger because she's a robot. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he's funny. like, no, watch this scene. Oh look, her boobs got bigger. What if like you just that. hire Arnold to do commentary for movies he's not even in? I mean, might as well. You watch the movie, then you go over to there and you sit down at the podcast studio, and then they uh, he just reviews the movie. At this point, I went to the lobby to get the drink. Yeah. All right. We need to get out of here. Uh, yes. <clears throat> we got to do some of these Are plugs. you talking about your bowels? No. I'm, so far, this has been disappointing. I, I, I bet we end the show, and then all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. You'll have oh, it's going to happen. Tell uh, everybody. Diablo 4 over here. It has not happened yet, but we do need to get out of here, so let's do the plugs. Jordan, our nation's eyes turn to you. Uh, watch it later pod on Instagram is my Instagram for the other show that I do. I'll watch it later podcasts. We talk movies, we do snacks. Last week we watched Steven Spielberg's 1941 and spoiler alert, it was boring. Like super boring. Yep. Like I was so surprised on how bad that movie was. Only the Ferris that. wheel uh, rolling down the uh, the pier is, is the only funny part. Right. And uh, the rest of it like had the makings of a good comedy and then like going back into looking up the behind the scenes of it people told spielberg not to make this movie it was not going to be funny any he was so riding high on jaws and uh, uh close encounters of the third kind he's like nope i'm gonna make a comedy and it was it was really bad so they also told there. him not to put um, kate capshaw into you know temple of doom yeah. but he didn't listen and to she that is either. probably rev like reviled as the worst female of all the franchise which is astounding to me um, but yeah, come check us out there. And then uh, next week, we'll be doing a, a snack show. So we're going to have all kinds of fun snacks. All right. Gittles, do you have anything? No, not really. <laughs> Gittlebase, uh, the Instagram, twitch.tv slash Gittlebase. Uh, I bought these Oreos I was excited to try, uh, but I didn't get to try them because we didn't do a segment too. Uh, or a consumer, consumer thing, segment. So. I couldn't do consumer, consumer to he this can't week. Eat. So. Oh, that's why. Yeah. I will say uh, I have opened these uh, another pack of them and I ate the whole thing. So that's that's the review I will give for now. But I can't wait to open these and try them on the show because they were weird. And I'll definitely have some stuff for next week as well. Awesome. Uh, for me, it's Eric Nagel across the board on all the social media. Uh, same thing for the show. You can find all the information there. If you want to join us live each and every week, Thursdays, 8 p.m. ish. Eastern time. Uh, come join us live in our uh, live chat rooms for YouTube and Twitch, all under the handle It's Eric Nagel. If you're listening to us on the iHeartRadio app, we do thank you for doing so. And if you're listening on demand and you want to share it uh, to all your friends, it's available on Apple, it's on Spotify. Go to those places, leave positive reviews, all that fun stuff. We could use it. And if you could tell two friends. And he tells two friends. And she tells two friends. And, and so, so on, on and, and so on and so on. So on. And so on. <laughs> That's how it goes. It's just so simple. So uh, and simple. help get the word out there. We appreciate it. So until the next time, everybody. Be excellent to each other. And have a wonderful time pooping your pants, Eric. Uh, that's probably going to happen <laughs> soon. And we'll be seeing you. Bye-bye. He's Eric Nagel. Nagel? Who are you? What do you want? We know you created the Super Soldier Serum. I was brought into Hydra's Winter Soldier program to pick up their work after the five failed test subjects in Siberia. I was a god. 
I did what no other scientist was able to do. Alas, we're out of time. Follow It's Eric Nagel on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For ways to listen to the show, go to itsericnagel.com. And remember to tell two friends so they can tell two friends. And they can tell two friends. They can tell two friends. And those two friends can tell two friends. Well, you get the idea. Keep it real, homies. 